architectural antique specialist Drew Pritchard is about to go on a big salvaging trip. Well, as usual, it's 20%. But from his years of experience, he knows that things don't always go to plan. Salvaging is a risky business. There's an awful lot of time and effort goes into finding the places where we can go and look at things. Sometimes things look good on paper, but you have to really follow your instincts and go and have a look for yourself. And in the hope that today's trip will pay off, Drew and T head to the small village of Dunsford in the heart of the Devon countryside, just 10 miles from Exeter. We're in Devon today, T, as you can tell. The beautiful, beautiful, beautiful county of Devon. It is gorgeous down here. Mm -hmm. um, to see a quite incredible business, actually, called Trinity Marine. Okay. And they basically salvage ocean liners. The business is run by a guy called Mark. We're marine antiques and artefacts salvagers. We're stripping old floating hotels and old factories, and they're full of stuff which will never be made again. Everything that goes on board a ship has to be made to the best quality and out of the best materials. So wherever you look on a decent ship, you'll see something which has another life in it. I am more than happy to go and buy bits off boats because the quality is fabulous and the design and the style of some of the stuff from the 50s is incredible. But I don't like the sea. Horrible, wet, nasty place full of dead things and poop. Pink, blue, watery thing, what mermaids oh, live in. Oh, it's horrible. God, it's tidy, isn't it? Very neat. Ship shape, some would say. It's ship shape. Yeah. And Devon fashion. <laughs> oh, yeah, super. Hello. Hi there. Mark. Yes. Drew, nice how are you doing? Nice to meet you, Drew. Yeah. Cool. I'm T. Hi, T. Nice right. to meet you, bud. Welcome wow. to Trinity Marine. Wow. It's very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> yeah. It's extremely impressive. Oh, it's yeah, a lot neater nice. than Drew's yard as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. These are just fittings. You don't actually break the boats. This is just the pieces from These the are the boats. pieces, the artefacts and fittings I salvaged from the ships. The yeah. best bits, really. The best bits, yeah. OK. Yeah. Can we have a look upstairs? Yeah, have just been drawn up there. There's everywhere. Do you want to show us around? Yeah, please. Give us the, give us the full tour. Cool. Come this way. Yeah, but... Trinity Marine is a family-run business and home to one of the biggest collections of marine salvage and nautical artefacts in the world. So you really do take everything. It's not what I imagined. I just imagined you took the portholes and the rails no, and the can't. anchors, but it's everything, isn't it? It's everything. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a go at the whole contents of a ship, provided it's the right ship built by the right yard at the right time. Okay. There's just so much to see. Well, yeah. Well, let's go, I'll, let's I'll, let's go have a look around here. Periscope there. <laughs> From a submarine. Yeah. Ex Royal Navy. Well, these are the ones with the bells in them. Yeah, that'll have a big <laughs> bell. Oh, that's, that's, the, the, that's, that's the noise you want. And you know, a lot of this stuff, people have never seen it before in their life, but they know what it yeah, sounds yeah. like, what it looks like. It's iconic stuff. Can we get one in the van? Where's well, full ahead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the dashboard. <laughs> Now, these, these things yeah. really interest me, because at least once or twice a year, I'll get offered one. Right. And I know there's a massive disparity in the pricing. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. What's the name of the best one again? C.B. Gorman. That's the one. Yeah, that's, that's the Rolls-Royce company, yeah. Have you got one of those here? Yeah, there's four or five there. 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 Yeah. That one and that one. British-based C.B. Gorman was the first company to manufacture closed diving helmets with standard dress in the early 19th century. As is, these helmets could sell for up to £5,000 each. They are the... They're the only thing in this whole building that just keeps going up and up and up in value all the time. Really? Yeah, yeah, there's collectors born every day for that stuff. It's very specialised. The one good thing, the quality is fantastic. Phenomenal quality of the furniture, the pieces from the boats. It's all top-notch. Okay. Actually, while we're here... What's, yeah, what is that? That's What's my favourite. That? <laughs> that is my favourite table that, light. Is that the fin off something? No, it's a table light that normally has a box square shade on top. Yeah. And they came off a, a beautiful uh, mid-century de mid deco ship. Um, so you, you haven't made these up? That's, that's as is? That's as is. That's that's straight off the ship. This cast bronze table lamp came off the Greek-owned Kenya Castle cruise ship in 1952. With some new wiring, it could fetch around £300. See, I see I'd be happy to buy a pair of these mm. for 200 quid. Yeah, I'm sure you would. So want, would I. And you want, 
<laughs> We've all got to make a buck. No, I understand. Yeah. I've been getting 175 quid for those. So if I bought... 15 of them. Four. Right. Because I don't want to flood the market with them. Yes. Um, what would they cost me? What's the absolute best you can do? Because I really like them. They're incredibly interesting. I genuinely really like them, and I'll be, I genuinely would be sad to see them go. I've hid them. You can see where I've hidden them, back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, one and a quarter each. That's, um, that's, that's the death. 50 a pair? Yeah. 500 quid for four? Yeah. How, where on earth else would you find those? Very, very cool. And not repeatable as well, that's the thing. So you'll be, you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll love them. I love them. I think they're incredibly they're really, interesting. They're really, really lovely. Good design shines through, and they are just blasting away it. No, it's superb. Really, really nice. See, what's that one off? What I like is, as well, it's that, you, that we know where that's coming from. The provenance. And we, provenance. Like, we like to think we sell the provenance for free. Pull out the drawer, maybe on the back you might even have the carpenter's notes or... Oh, there you go. Windsor there. Castle, first-class accommodation. There you go. D-deck cabin. And do you know what? It's stylish. It's stylish, yeah. It was very well-made, timeless stuff. Oh, I see. It's got a little and clip on the back. For because it's the, uh, for exactly. the boat. Do you know what these little slides here are for? Stop, Stop everything face. going over. Exactly. This teak desk came off the RMS Windsor Castle one of the biggest passenger mail ships operated by the Union Castle Line from 1959 to 1977. It could sell for £900. So what, what's the trade on these, then? If you've got so many and you've had them for nothing... How many do you want? Well, I know, I... Just one. <laughs> just one. <laughs> just one. I'd like to... I like to keep things really simple. I'm happy for you to take one and I'll give you a good price because I'd like to think you could sell those, make a profit and come back for more. I think it's got a good look. I really do. It's got something about it. Mm. There's nice little details on them. That... Yeah. So what are they to me then? I know you. I know you were jokingly saying three hundred quid. You didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't. You weren't serious. <laughs> I think. I mean, I'd love. To, I'd. I'd love to take one at two fifty, and then I'll give it a go. To be honest, Drew, it's a bit like that is. Drew and T are at Trinity Marine Salvage near Exeter in Devon where there's a whole host of riches to tempt him. I love them. Sold. And he's bargaining hard for this mid-century ship desk. You've only got about 80 of them, haven't you? I've got plenty of them, but it's great stock. It's great stuff, and uh, it's cheap, as it is. Uh, but I, good I, value. I, I, it's good value. Good value. Good value. Nothing's good. cheap, it's good value. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Um, Meet in the middle? Yeah, we're going to end up meeting in the middle. 275. Deal. Yeah, thank you. Lovely. Oh, that's a nice thing. Yeah, it's fab. A great buy, really happy with it. No work to do, and if I phone up, I can buy another one. Brilliant setup. Thanks. Yeah. Should we go upstairs? Yeah, please Have do. Have a look. Like these. Yeah. They're good, aren't they? Yeah, good price. That's my sort of thing. These, I mean, they're they're wow, aren't they? Yeah, that's what they are. The big Suez Suez Canal searchlights. Yeah, is that what they're from? They use two on a ship um, to to get through the Suez Canal. Amazing. I've got seventy of those, starting at five hundred quid a piece. Really? Yeah. Now you're just showing off. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> ah, I like those. Yeah, similar principle, just little out of the loading bays. Yeah. Very Brass interesting. Jets, about the 60s. Very simple. Mm. So, but what money are these things? 50 quid. 50 quid. Mm. Just love that shape. Can we have, you've got more downstairs then? So yeah, there's more, more lights downstairs, downstairs yeah. Mm. Well, how much are these ones? How much are this thing here? 250 pounds. Mm. Explosion-proof lights, East German ship, look like giant microphones, in my <laughs> opinion. I was wondering what, what they reminded yeah, me yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, I think. <laughs> OK, let's, let's crack on. <laughs> They're very Jules Verne looking, bit of fun. It's, it's incredible. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit... It's not many times I'm sort of lost for words, but I nearly am. It's incredible. Yeah. It's really, really Thank good. you. Thank you, Drew. These yeah. I like a lot. These are unrestored, aren't they? Yeah, I haven't restored them yet. 
Yeah. Can we um, can we pull them out? Can we have a look at these? Yeah, yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, it's fine. They're huge cargo lights. They'd, they'd be off the Love the lens. Yeah, the glass is what makes those. Oh, they're heavy. I've got that one. You got it? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, the glass, yeah. These ones mm. are my favourite I've seen all day. <laughs> really? But they're in the worst condition of all the ones. That's typical, isn't it? Mm. These copper and brass cargo pendant lights came from the huge gantries of a 1960s German freighter. With some extensive restoration, the four lights could retail for £600 each. Maybe if I took the four as a resto project, yeah. what can you do? I'd have to do as a, a to be honest, I'd be, I'd be pushing you for quite a good deal on these. Do you want to make me an offer, Drew? Uh, I'm thinking um, 280 for the four. 280 for the four. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, deal. deal. Yeah, thank you. Lovely. No, we'll have those as well. Cool. Right. Okay. I've got to do a lot of work, but then they're a million dollars. So they're going to look amazing. The trio intend to move on, but something catches Drew's eye. These um, cabinets are intriguing me, Mark. Yeah. Where are they? What are they out of? I know they're out of a boat, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, they are. They are uh, possibly the finest ship of the 20th century, the SS France. Of course, the lads that moved them around moved them around by the tops. Ah, uh, yeah. So. I know. I like mm. them. Mm. Love this, this sort of gold colour. Mm. So the oxen... Are they saleable? You'd have to get one with that. You'd have to get with that. They'd have to be. You'd have to get two that are mint. Mm. When you, that's the thing. You have to get a pair of them that are sort of perfect. The ocean liner SS France was constructed in 1961. Her interior showcased cabinets were made by some of the top French designers. With minimal restoration, this one could get 500 pounds. So, um, how much for a pair of these then? 150 pounds each is my bottom line on that's those. That's it. Yeah, it is. That's what I'm selling the the tired grade B ones for. But mm. uh, okay, if we've taken a pick, I'll, I've got to take them. Take okay, a pair of good ones. I'll take them. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, yeah Thank lovely. You. Very unusual. Completely off the wall items I've bought today. I could be right. I could be wrong. But I'm really happy with them. Fantastic find. Super stylish gear. Just fantastic. Great day. Mark, right. pleasure. Thanks, Drew. Thanks for the biz. Yeah, thanks for coming down. Really appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Any feeling we'll be back? Yeah, I reckon you will. <laughs> Good lads. No, that's the attitude. Take care, Cheers, boys. See you. Bye. Well, I have to say that was a top day out for it me. It was. It really wasn't what I was expecting. Nor me. Nor me. Wonderful. I bought a collection of items, utterly individual, fabulous design, great prices, and good condition. And a good contact. Good contact. Shock a block with their nautical purchases, they make the long trek back to base. Hello. Hello, hello. We've just been to a place called Trinity Marine. Do you know what it is? Happy, cri happy Christmas. I was going to say. She birthday, isn't it? They're off the Windsor Castle. So these are out of the, um, the cabins? Out of the cabins. It needs a little bit of a polish. That's it. That's it. And the best thing is, he's got how, how many? many? Loads of them. Hundreds. Hundreds. And there's more. Oh, yes. Ollie, look. This could be a lucky day. Look at the lens. Yes, it's oh, nice. Look Best at the lens on that. There's four of them. They're all a bit battered, but I like that. Look at that. See that one Ollie's got? See in the back there? Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Well, we threw these in free as well, yeah. <laughs> just in case you have problems up here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the next bit and the best thing are these. Aren't they just wonderful? I thought they were propellers off a boat. It looks like it with all the sort of... Yeah, and this looks like and... barnacles yeah. and whatever, yeah. doesn't it? I just Fantastic. think they're wonderful. Absolutely over the moon with those. All yours, Ollie. Not hard. Oh. <laughs> Drew.
Drew and T head out on their next salvaging trip. It's a three and a half hour drive south to the historic market town of Princess Risborough. Today, T, we are in the beautiful county of where? Where are we? Uh, Buckinghamshire. Buckinghamshire, to see a guy called Ray Agase. My name's Ray. I'm a roofing contractor by trade, but um, I've got into this uh, wheel and dealing lark and uh, quite enjoy this. It's better than working. Just love weird and wonderful things. He's got a very large collection of what, what we call in the trade smalls. Right. So little bits of this, that and the other. So I don't think he's got big pieces of furniture. Ideally, hopefully he has. Right. But definitely worth a look. I love going to guys like this. You just never know what you're going to find. This will be the place. Oh, there he is. Hello. Hi, Drew. Ray. Yeah. Good to meet you, Drew. Good to see you. How, How are you doing? All right, Ray. Hi, Good T. How you, How you doing? doing? Good to see you. Uh, glad to come down to see you. Like your little yeah. motor. Yeah. Triumph for test. Two litre. Straight six. Overdrive? Pop. Yeah, overdrive. All working. I've not owned one of these. Yeah. It's about the only vehicle you've not owned. No, no. <laughs> um, I've come from your email you yeah. sent us about yeah. some stuff you've got for sale. Uh -huh. um, and there's an awful lot of it from what I can see. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how on earth? I mean, because you're a roofer, so how, what's, roofing. what's, where's all this from? Um, really stems from the old man taking me to the tip and picking... He's seeing him pick things up, and I pick things up that I liked. Started collecting, and it just gets out of hand. Does That's this it. sound familiar to you, Drew? It, it's, it's very, <laughs> yeah. very, very, very yeah. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I'd love um, to have a look around. Yeah, of course. So if we can... Where is it? All here? All in here. All yeah. right, let's, let's have a look. A few other places we can go. Blimey, there's loads. Oh, yeah. So... How long's this lot taken to accumulate, um, then? Not that long, believe it or not. We've probably been in this unit six or seven years, I suppose. Yeah. Um, more right to sort of dive in and yeah, just look at yeah. it. So Carry everything... On, as you... Yeah. Everything's, everything's for sale? Yeah, yeah. Everything? Pretty much everything. <laughs> 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 OK. There's a nice deeds box. I a bit shabby. But... Oh, it's nice it's got the interior. Yeah. Yeah, they're usually all missing all this, the lock. They were... As far as I know, they were That'd be a blotter in there, wouldn't it, I suppose? That's it, yeah, a blotter in there, all your kit, and they'd yeah. carry this from court to court, but they had to be fireproof, that's why. Mm-hmm. Quite... Mm, I think the condition's against it. Nice little brass handles. Hmm. Remnants of the name on the top there. SW. No, conditions just... Yeah, yeah no, you, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just too bad, isn't it? Uh-huh. With a place like this, there's loads of things here. But condition. Condition, condition, condition is the most important thing. You can find the rarest thing in the world, the most desirable thing in the world, but if it's broken, it's broken. To be honest, we're always just looking for things that are sort of ready to rock. If at all possible. It's not always possible. Yeah. Really, after that, too. Yeah. I quite like that. But they're battered again. See the condition's just... Yeah, I'd probably want about 40 quid for it. OK. It would work quite well, though, wouldn't it? It works mm. quite well. It's a yeah. bit beaten up. Yeah. I mean, they're very simply constructed. It's simple yeah. to fix it. Yeah. It's just time again. Maybe. Maybe I'll think yeah. about it. Look at the amount of just stuff piled up. There has to be something in here. Excuse the mess. No, don't worry. Uh, that don't wouldn't worry. be you. That's um, some lovely Danish. Too new. Yeah. Too new. Um, that's a nice um, sort of deco-y cocktail cabinet. There. Yeah, I don't know if that's your sort of we're, thing. We're there. there. Well, I'm glad I'm not yeah. the only one that found it attractive. Because when, <laughs> when I saw it, I thought. You no, know, they're undervalued. I just don't want to drop it on your car. Look at that. I just went off a look at it, really. It's more it's more just interesting. Yeah. And the back, you know, having the decoration on the back as well. That's right. The There's around. a hell of a lot of work gone into it. That cabinet, it's, it's pretty beaten up. It has to have been the best of its type in its day. 
Uh, unfortunately, this one wasn't, and now definitely isn't with the damage. Interesting to look at, interesting to learn from, but would be nothing I'd want to buy. It's, it's not me, but it's very, very different. Mm. Very different. Yeah, yeah. It sometimes can be difficult to sort of keep a sort of positive spin when you can't find anything in this much stuff, but you have to. And I'm always try to be the guy who's there last, there first, and goes a bit further, because you do find it if you keep looking. So, yeah, there's lots of things here. There's a few things I see, actually, just mm -hmm. when I stood here. This. Yeah. That. Is that mm -hmm. um, G-Plan? G-Plan, yeah. I think it's the homemaker or something like that, chair. G-Plan was a pioneering range of British furniture, manufactured in the 1950s by the Gom family in the neighbouring town of High Wycombe. After extensive restoration, this chair could sell for £600. It's, it's, uh, it's rough. It's such a shame, isn't it? It is rough. I'm, I'm looking at about 300 quid for it. It's got to have... Dry cleaned. Dry cleaned. At Raya Gase's yard in Prince's Risborough, Drew has been rummaging through piles of bric-a-brac without success. No, condition's just... Yeah, yeah no, you, you, know, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just too bad, isn't it? Uh-huh. But could this chair turn things around? That's too rough. It's got too many faults. Too many faults. No. Just needs too much. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's probably worth what two, two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd, so I'd settle for two fifty for it. But if there's nothing in it for you, I mean, it's, it's, it's a just nice once I, I've got to, I've got to get it mint to get yeah. four and a half, five. Probably mint, a bit, mint, mint, you're probably mint a bit more, condition. I, I would have thought. I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure, but you know, you have to keep up with the trends all the time. Yeah. The know. colour of the upholstery is not. Yeah. Not fabulous. What about if you covered that with a nice? All money. Yeah. Pouring more money into it. Yeah. Not going to see it back. No. Great comfy chair, though. Yeah. Mm. I've never super, it, super, yeah, super, sorry. super ergonomic. Really, really nice. Mm. No, no. Okay. It's a shame I have to yeah. walk away from that, because mm. I like no it. I always say if something has got three faults in it, it's generally had it. You know, you've got to think, those have all got to be fixed before I can sell them. I cannot sell it as it is. There's no profit to be made selling that as it is. I, uh, I spotted that on the way down, Drew, and is that, is that of any interest? So, just when I think we're not going to get anything, T turns around and says, what about that? And he finds something I instantly really like. Pal and puppets. Really out. Yeah. This other box is a little bit tight, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. Going to need Reese. Is it all there? He's not having a... No. <laughs> is it all there, too? <laughs> <laughs> He's That's not the... having a good day, is he? No, no. I like the head, though. The skull. Mm. Oof. I really like it. I really like it. I'm just thinking, what a nightmare to put back together again. Yeah, you're right there. Bob Pelham began making puppets in 1947. Within a few years, Pelham puppets really caught on, and his one-man band became an international success in the 1960s. Recently, there's been a resurgence of interest in them. Although this one is not in the best condition and the box is worse for wear, it could still fetch around £100. Something like that, the condition, with the condition, 35 quid. Do you know what? I wouldn't know if that was a good deal, mm -hmm. to be honest. I don't know enough about them. It's in the eye beholder, isn't it? I do like it, the though. The ribcage. The... Yeah. The torso. I think it is all there. I just don't know anything about it. And how much did you say it was? 25 quid? 35. You misheard me, obviously. So 30 pounds probably going to buy it. Yeah. I'll have that. It's just a bit of fun, isn't okay. it? Lovely. I like it. Well done, T. Yeah, nice. Found something that you it's bought. Excellent. Don't drop it. <laughs> I like the look of the little skeleton. Um, it's different, it's interesting, it's odd, and it's complete. I have no idea what it's worth. Having exhausted every nook and cranny at the main storage area, Ray takes Drew and T to a second warehouse a few miles down the road. Oh, I like the car. Yeah. It's what nice. year is it? It's a uh, 970. Yeah. Same Eight age foot. as me. Really? I'm 970, yeah. 
It's in much better condition than you. Comment, yeah, but I won't. I won't say anything. Lovely. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I want to go and buy a soft top yeah. now. Yeah. You get because it's going to roof. It yeah, lasts for about three weeks, though, doesn't it? <laughs> and you want a roof on it again. Welcome. Ah, okay. Through this lot. Limey. This is more like your natural habitat. Yeah. Too. <laughs> How about this then? It's a globe wernicus. I... Is it just a bit of it, or is it? Yeah. When I came through the door, um, straight away you could see these globe wernicus stacking bureau bookcases. It's quite a common item, but something that I really like, and I always want to buy them. The international office furniture manufacturer Globe Wernicke patented these shelves in 1899, calling them elastic bookcases because of their flexibility. The shelves can be rearranged into different sizes by inserting units of contrasting depth. Once restored, this one could sell for £600. As the glass has gone, yeah. how was £100 sound? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> must have all the wrong oh, things. It would appear so. Where are, you, where are you on it, Andrew? Um, That's quite quite unusual, isn't it, the light oak ones? Uh, no. It? No, it's unusual that it's just two pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite small. It does have the top on it. It has the hat on it as well. Um, 50 quid. Glass is broken. Frame's fallen out of there. It's sorting out. It's battered to hell, and it's only two pieces. Right. So, if I'm saying 100 quid and you're saying 50 quid, are we going to meet in the middle? Yeah, 65. 75. 60. <laughs> 75. <laughs> 60 quid. 65. 65. There oh. you go, done. We ended up at 65 pounds. That's fine. A good seller. But this one is, is, is actually in, not in great nick. It needs a, a fair bit of messing with, that one. Still, we'll have that. Yeah. That's great. It's all glamour, this working for Drew. <laughs> Oh, don't scratch the interior. <laughs> right, you're right with that. Yeah. Sure. Done. Yeah. Uh, get hold of that, right? Right then. Uh, you, you, you got it. No. Oh, that's it. You got it. Yeah. You got a little hole in the back for us. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Don't drop it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Not long. Oh, the joy. This is fun, Drew. You having a nice time, mate? Oh yeah. I quite like to uh, bargain him with Ray, but he does tend to start about a third higher than it really is worth. And he's quite tough to get that bit off. He's right. trying to make the profit I want to make. I was hoping to spend a bit more money, but, um, you know, what he's bought, I've not, I'm not going to miss, so um, I'm, I'm pleased. Oh, well, thanks, Ray. No problem. Good Much to see you. Much appreciated. No problem. I particularly enjoyed the ride out in the sun. Yeah, yeah, not Best bad, was it? Best bit of the day, actually. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, T. Been great yeah, good today. to see you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Right, Take care, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, what do you think of that, then? He was great, wasn't really. he? He was a nice yeah, chap. You don't, very often you do get to go to work and go for a little spin in a little two-seater. It was all right. It was all right. There could always be better. The Globe Wernick is the money piece for the day. That's going to pay the wages. Back at Conway, the team are flat out. Oh, nice. These have come out well, Alex. Yeah. That is so good. But, yeah, come out lovely. Well, I'll leave you to it. OK. <laughs> you don't need me. We don't, do we? <laughs> It's another day and another trip, and Drew and T are off to Northumberland, a four-and-a-half-hour drive north to the small village of Chillingham. So today, T, we are going to Chillingham Castle. So who are we going to see? We're going to meet Sir Humphrey Wakefield. I acquired Chillingham Castle 30 years ago. I could only afford a ruin. We put roofs and floors, and I had a certain amount of furniture, and I'd got a certain amount of furniture in my travels around the whole world, and it all fell together like a jigsaw puzzle. Originally a 12th-century stronghold, Chillingham became a fully fortified castle in 1344, 
and occupied a strategic position during the bloody border feuds in the late Middle Ages between the English and Scots. But he's quite an incredible bloke. And to be honest, today, he might be a bit of a challenge as well. Because he had 20 years as a furniture specialist for a major London auction house. You may have met your match. So it's unlikely there's going to be anything in the castle that's for sale, unless it's sort of, I think, probably big bucks. So why we've been called up here, I think, is because he's got some outbuildings full of what he called projects. Right. So who knows what will be in there? You know, really, who knows? Look at that. Ca proper castellation. Look at the bat on the weather vane. Oh, that's brilliant. That is staggering. This full-size cannon. What a place. That is properly intimidating, isn't it? Hello there. Drew. 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 Nice Drew. to meet you. How are you? Very well. Hello. Good. Very nice to you. Too. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. All right. You arrived slap on time. The, the, it was striking midday. The bell tolls. There we have man traps, as you see, for catching predatory <laughs> antique dealers. <laughs> <laughs> this is astonishing. It's really sort of... Uh, you can imagine how intimidating this place must have been. Seven or eight hundred years ago. Did you people. find it still intimidating? Little. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I'd love to see some inside the castle. It's incredible. Well, well, I long to see. Come across the courtyard quickly because it's raining so hard. Okay. But you see where the stone changes colour? Yeah. That was all put in Tudor days yeah. to, to greet the king. Wow. Um, king James. Astonishing place. Wow. This is incredible. Look at that. Is that real? That's real, yes. 19th century elephant. He's lovely elephant, isn't he? Astonishing. Wonderful. There's just, you know what? It's absolutely breathtaking. There's so much to take in. There's too much to take in. <laughs> that, there are these wild cows here, which are of historic only wild cows left in the whole world, and they were brought over here by the Romans. After the Romans left, the pagans went on sacrificing these wild cows to their gods, and they had these sort of masks which they would wear in their sort of dances, which were quite sort of scary in their way. Yeah. Incredible. So and where do we go? Your... Where, where do we go next? I think we go this way. Okay. Right, so Drew, come out here. I'll lead on just to show you where. Ah, wow, the battlements. And here are the battlements, you see. And then there's our garden. It's very grand. And you see, Louis Philippe, king of France, came here and gave these urns to the castle. And I've got them, I've got them all cast. Have a look at the bat twizzling round. Incredible. The weather vane. I love the weather vane. And he twizzles around and says hello to you, you see, from time to time. Did you have that made? Yes, I did. It's just, it's just so full of history, this building, but it's menacing too. And I like that about it. Do here we are. This is... Wow. Oh, wow, what a fabulous room. I this, is, this is full this wow. Is full wow, yes. I know um, you've got that to talk about. That. I could <laughs> tease you. The, I, I know. could tease you. Do you know, shall I tease you? Yeah, go on. You, you don't test, don't <laughs> no, test me. But now what you've, after what you've told me, no. you're, you're in charge, so you tell me. No. I mean, that, 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 that's Irish, with a sort of, as you know, sort of Renaissance Italian top, which is wonderful. Mm. Those pedestals are by this amazing guy, Forgini, the early 18th century, late 18th century Italian. You've got this table. That, is that Irish again? That's, that's, that's Irish, Irish, Irish. Yeah. The, these are Irish, too. I love that. Oh, really? Yes. Um, grand Irish, as it were. I wouldn't thinks, have recognised those no, as Irish at all. Why would you? Why would you? And um, tapestry. The knowledge, the, the experience that he has is way beyond anything I've come across before. It's quite incredible. Today I am a student, I'm being taught. What, 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 what can you tell me about this? Is it Italian? No. Go on then. <laughs> no, I'll, t I'll tell you. It's, it's Louis XIV, mm. it's French, and quite extraordinary, it came from Versailles. Sir Humphrey is testing me, and I have to say, 
He's tested me on stuff I've never seen before. Andrew, that's a pretty... It, um, that, that. Can you tell me what that is? I'm not going to state the obvious, so no, you can go ahead well, on that. You tell me again. what the obvious is. I was just going to say it's a... 17th century mirror, but I'm lost after that. No, to nope. wrong, wrong, wrong. OK. It, it, it's Irish and sort of and, and 1740-ish. So have you had to buy in everything since mm -hmm. you've been here? You've had to buy everything in since you've been here, or was it not here when you came? Can you ask the most irritating questions? Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Welcome to my world. Um, yes, I can't think building. how Drew keeps you with him. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at that. That's quite... A daybed. No. What is it? It's Cot. a bath. It's a bath? It's a no. Bath. Yes. Oh, my word. Look but it, at it's, that. It, 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 it's wonderful, isn't it? That's um, astonishing. Um, that's mid-18th century French, as uh, you know, and um, by a fellow called Delafosse. I've read about him. And I just love it. For me, it's absolutely fascinating. I understand why he's bought nearly every piece, and some of this stuff I've never seen before. There's things here I'll never see again. They're incredible, rare. I mean, rare doesn't come into it, actually, with some of the stuff. It's beyond rare. Drew and T are in Northumberland, where, for once, Drew is the pupil. These are Irish, too. Are they really? Yes. I wouldn't have recognised those no. as Irish at all. Why would you? Why would you? He's learning lots, but will there be anything to buy? Yeah, I'm always... I mean, obviously, things That's in here nice. aren't for sale. That's a lovely pier, isn't it? Drew is going to have trouble buying things, because in the castle, everything is like a jigsaw puzzle. It fits into its place. And I always find it terribly, terribly difficult to get to let anything go, because I love everything I buy so much. Wouldn't buy it if I didn't, you know. Incredible. I'd love to see some more. With nothing for sale here, Drew and T move into the next room. No, I know. Look at that. Wow, the tower clock. Yes. It's literally it's just incredible everywhere Drew, I turn. this is nice. This is nice. Do you see a thing for learning to walk in from the 17th century? Ah, a little century. baby walker. Baby, 17th century baby, baby so walker. So nothing in life is new to you. This I bought back from China. But I just love I love the woodwork of it. Look at the woodwork of it. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, God, yeah, look how simple that is. Isn't it? It looks just tied on, the leather just tied on. Look at this. That's fun, isn't it? Yeah. I've a horrid feeling it hasn't been decommissioned. Oh, really? Well, I love the tour of the house, but obviously I'm here to see your sort of overspill as well. But can we go and have a look at the items possibly for sale in the sheds? Yes, the very exciting items, you mean. Yes, the exciting ones. <laughs> <laughs> so through here? Yes. Should I, should I go on quickly? Yeah. Go yeah. through. It's amazing. Oh, my God, look at that. We walked through that outbuilding then, and I, I was sort of flicked the torch up, and I went, oh, my God. I couldn't believe what I saw, but as soon as I saw it, I recognised what it was, and it was a... Uh, uh, a very early 19th century horse-drawn hearse um, in completely unrestored condition. High Gothic. What do you think of this? It's uh, pretty stunning. Do you know what it is? Uh, it's... No, but there's initials on it. It's a hearse. Is it? It's a horse-drawn 19th century hearse. What a thing. That's, that's seriously incredible. <laughs> look, look at this, look at this. Look at that, that's where the guy would sit. I didn't expect to see that today. Just one of those things that you're never going to see again. The toilet mirror. I've been buying a lot of these recently, even though they're so basic. They're what? They're so basic, but I'd really like them. Yes, I love them. I think they're just beautiful in their own way. 
particularly like the little toilet mirror. They're not worth much money, but I really like them. And you can pick them up anywhere, but that was a little unusual one. I've not seen one with it hinged on the top like that before. Um, probably just estate made, very, very simple. Is this, is this for sale, Sir Humphrey? What? A little toilet mirror? No. No. OK. I asked if it was for sale. It's not. That's, that's OK. I know it's, hey, if, if I don't walk away with anything from here, I know it's in the right hands. Could I go upstairs and have a look at... If I go sure, up the ladder, sure. would that yes. be OK? Can you foot this for me, T? I think it's not going anywhere, to be honest, but you never know. The moment I saw the chair, it just struck me out of all those other chairs there. It just went bang. It's like a light was on it. I just went, that's the one. I just absolutely adore that chair. So, Humphrey, what do you think of that? Charming, beautiful chair. I love it. This is English? English. Date-wise? Um, 1820. Yeah. I love that chair. Is it for sale? It's, it, sure, it's for sale. It is? I mean, you, okay. Um, I'd be buying this purely for the pleasure of it, uh, yes. not to sell. It's not, uh, I'm not going to sell that. that. That's right. It's a thing to live, have and learn from. Absolutely. This wooden 19th century English Regency chair might originally have been for use in the bedroom. With remnants of its original colour scheme and with its wicker seat intact, it could be worth nearly £300. How much, how much is it? Um, Drew, don't, 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 don't I, I mean, I, it's like selling my grandmother. I, I you know, we, we, we'll talk about, we, I love to talk about that. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm just, I love the chair. I love it. It's it beautiful. wants to be looked after. All that so sort of elegant, thing. it sits so well. I'd be really happy to, if I was able to purchase the chair today in any way, shape or form, or do some sort of deal on it, because it's just a beautiful, elegant piece of furniture doesn't matter if something's not worth a lot of money or in terrible condition. If it's well designed, well made, it's still a beautiful thing. OK, let's bring it down and we'll discuss it um, a little further. Be very, very careful. Yeah, you got it? Yeah. OK. Sir Humphrey is unsure whether he wants to part with the chair. They head back to the main house for more haggling. Right, so here we are again. This amazing building. Um, right, what, I'm, what I propose to do, I'd like to give you £150 for the chair. I know it's not worth £150 to you, but it is to me. And uh, I understand why you like it, so it's what do you think? It's worth much more than that to me, it is. but I'll let you have it for that. Excellent, thank you very much. <laughs> Deal, thank you. It's like selling a friend, you know. It's like, it's, if, you have, if you have dogs and they have puppies and you fall in love with the puppies, it's terribly difficult to let them go, you know, and I've let that puppy go. And um, I know it'll be looked after, and so that makes me very happy. Um, and I have to say, I have had my favourite day out. I've absolutely loved it, and it's been a real pleasure. Well, I don't often Thank have the pleasure so of going round with anyone who understands anything, and so I'm very grateful to you. Brilliant. Indeed. Thank you. And I learned so much. I was the one who didn't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's been great. Good. Great to Thank meet you. you. Cheers. Bye bye. Now, I'm really, really pleased I bought it. I'm really pleased I bought it from him, actually. You know? It's like a lesson learned. It's like a sort of little trophy of lesson learned. And it's something I'll remember buying. If I find in Christie's weekly that he's, or Sotheby's annually, that he's sold the chair, and telling everyone how clever he was to have discovered it. I shall ask you to stay, and I shall just ask him to see the torture chamber, and then he'll find both doors are shut, and they won't be open in a hurry. On sort of the list of good days, this is right up there. It's just, I'm like a kid in a candy shop, it's just a great fun. All the things and all the years of me wandering around sheds and buildings, and then to come here today, and it's just got everything times 100, I would just enjoy myself. Just fantastic day. Absolutely loved that today. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Fabulous, brilliant. 
Excellent. I didn't hardly even I didn't even buy anything I can sell. <laughs> it just bought something for you. Absolutely wonderful. We've just day. been shopping today for you, haven't we, really? It, I don't know, it wasn't even shopping, it was just it was just an absolute joy. I, I think uh, that murder might occur if you sold that seat though. I think selling that chair would just be incredibly bad karma. Bad antique karma. It would be bad antique karma, plus I think he would hunt you down and shoot you like a dog. <laughs> Back in Conway, things are not going quite so smoothly. Rebecca has been attempting to sort out the Pelham puppet that Drew bought from Ray Gase's yard. What's that? I don't know what to do next, actually. Ah, oh, I think that goes on there. I think. I'm never going to be able to do this. <laughs> Nearly put his head on his pelvis. This is going to take an, an awful long time. Oh, it's right, pig's here. Struggling, struggling. Everybody thinks this is funny. <laughs> but not me. Time for a cup of tea. Or maybe something stronger. And Drew returns from his educational expedition with his latest purchase in hand. Is he? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? All right. We've just been to see a guy called Sir Humphrey Wakefield at Chillingham Castle. We had one of the best days ever. That's lovely. Isn't that beautiful? And unrestored. All the paint's just fallen off it, but there's enough of the original painted decoration to make it interesting. It's fab. Isn't it beautiful? It does come with a covenant, though, doesn't it, Drew? Yes. I can never sell it. You can't sell something? Can't sell it. I'm not, not to sell it. Um, well, what would happen if you, if you sold it? Bad things would happen. He's, <laughs> he's got a dungeon and I'd end up in it. Let's <laughs> sell it. Hello, Drew Pritchards. In the antique salvaging world, not all salvage comes cheap. And Drew Pritchard often has to pay big money to get the best, while still leaving room for him to make a profit. I'm hoping this week to be able to pick up some really good quality stock means I'm going to have to dig deep, spend a lot of money. But it's worth investing a lot of money in the right pieces to get a much better return. With the hope a new lead will pay dividends, Drew and T eagerly hit the road. Today we have got a very exciting call. They're off to the Midlands and the town of Worcester. Set on the banks of the River Severn and home to the imposing 11th century cathedral. We're off to see a Catholic girls school called St Mary's and they are modernising and they're building a sensory garden. So they're having a clear out of the cellars, which, get this, have not been cleaned out in at least 50 years. Wow. Good. This is the sort of call we love. I'm Laurie Stewart. I'm the bursar for St Mary's School. I'm Stuart Rogers. I'm the residential caretaker. We asked Drew to come to the school today um, to have a look at some of the items that we're clearing out of our cellar and attic and some other areas. Set in 18 acres of land, the Victorian mansion was originally built as a house in the 1860s. Then, in 1933, it was bought by the sisters of St Mary Madeleine Postel and converted into a girls' Catholic school. We need to clear areas so that we can refurbish them. Stuart's a pretty tough negotiator, so it's going to be interesting to see how he and Drew get on. Hi. Hi. Drew. Hi, how Laurie. Nice to meet you. Hello, Hi. mate. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Stuart. Fantastic. Can we go on through? Yeah, come on in. Thank you. OK, so this is the marble hall. It's incredible. It was turned into a hospital in the First World War, and then in the 1930s, um, the nuns bought it, um, the order that currently owns it. Um, and they've had it ever since, and they turned it into a school. I'm staggered by the condition the building's in. And the quality of everything. I mean, just look at the floor grills. Mm. Cast bronze. Yeah. Carrara marble mm. floors. It's a lovely place to work. What's, what's this room through here? This is the um, music room. I'll take you in the this way. Follow through. Oh, Another amazing room. Everything in here is just incredible. Look at the light fittings. The detail of the seats. Unbelievable. But the first, I'd have to be honest, the thing that I looked at as soon as I came into that. This is William de Morgan tiles, yes? Right, yes. 
If you had the, these are all listed, I'm, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. That's incredibly rare and worth quite a lot of money. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> William de Morgan was one of the most famous tile designers of the arts and crafts movement. These tiles date back to the 1860s or 70s. If they were for sale, they will be worth around 20 to 30,000 pounds. When the nuns bought this, this was obviously this in this condition, or has it all yeah. been renovated? It was like this. It was like this. Um, it's we've literally done very little to it apart from try to maintain it. From what I've seen so far, I am over the moon that we've come here because I came here to buy school things. But what I really want to find now is a piece of furniture that was specced with the house. This place just gets, God, look at this, just gets better. This is just a private chapel? Yes. It's this whole sort of, they've got this whole Islamic thing going on again. Mm. Catholic churches, they really did go for it, didn't they? They did. The they smells so and did. the bells, they just yeah. turned it all right on. It's amazing. I mean, you couldn't get much more over spec than this. It's just, they've just thrown everything at it, haven't they? It was the culture at the time, and it was just, you know, you didn't go and buy your big flash car for outside the house. You spent it on the, yeah. on the inside of the house and on the facade of the house. Well, they certainly did that. I noticed you've got these chapel chairs here. Yes. Well, I'd be interested in those. I don't know if you're interested in getting rid of them, but always, I always buy chapel chairs, as many as I can. They're a really simple thing, mm. but they always sell well. We're not um, able to sell them just yet, although we would be interested. We're looking to do something different with the big chapel. OK. So, as we change that, we'd look sure. to possibly... Well, I, I'm sort of 20, 25 pounds each minimum. OK. So, however many you've got, if you've got a thousand, I'll buy a thousand. Okay. You know, it's however many you've got, I'd be interested in them. Right, okay. Um, particularly if they're in that sort of condition. They're not going to take much to refurb. I just wonder whether or not people Some would want actually. that on it. Yeah, they're in better condition down at the end. Oh, these are in lovely condition. Mm. These are great. Just need a bit of re tea cutting on the seats, that's all. So, obviously, I'm not even going to try and buy anything else in here. No. No, no. obviously. I should imagine this is great. One listed? Yes. It is, I thought so. Yes. So we have this table. Oh, that's... Yeah. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? We believe that it's come from um, Barclay Castle. There's a label underneath that says Lady Catherine Barclay, um, which leads us to think it was a gift. Beautiful thing. Wow. I'm bowled over, actually, really? by it. Yeah, I am. It's, it's lovely. This 19th century circular oak tilt table is both attractive and functional. With some restoration, it could fetch £1,500. So this is something you'd want to sell? Yeah. It's just sort of in the way. I'll give you £500 for it. I was thinking it might be worth a bit more than that. It is. But that's what they call the old school profit. <laughs> it needs work. This is the only fault, which is where the two sections of the top have just opened up through mm -hmm. heat and age and the cold, and there's nothing, not a lot you can do really. Um, what figure do you have in mind? Well, I was thinking a couple of grand, but. Um... <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> yeah. I think in mint condition, I, I'd yeah. probably be wanting to pay sort of a thousand to twelve hundred for it in mint condition, but it's it's a slightly odd piece of furniture that doesn't really have a place these days. People don't use them. If I said seven hundred and we met in the middle, it's six hundred. I think yes, we'll have a deal. I think that's fair to turn up at a school and to be able to buy a table of that quality, rarity, and with that little tag underneath history. Um, I'm blown away. It doesn't happen. Once every few years, maybe if you're lucky. With one deal done, they head into the classrooms. So this is the textiles room with ah. two tables. Ah, two tables to get rid of. Wonderful. That one I'm going to discount straight away. OK. That one's got no interest for me. This one does. Um, so it's like a cutting table, isn't it? That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's like an Indian ink or something in there. Yeah. Probably might be able to get a bit of it out, but maybe not. I don't know. Adds to the character. Yeah. <laughs> I would, good, I would, good, I would, good, I would buy this for two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds. You want to try and sell him some tables, Drew? Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy a table? This large English oak draper's table is late Victorian. 
After extensive restoration to the tabletop, it could be worth £3,000. All joking aside, what do you really want for it? Uh, we were thinking about 700, weren't we? In that region. Um, 700 quid. Bargain. Uh... At St Mary's School in Worcester, Drew has successfully made one purchase. Yes, we'll have a deal. I think that's fair. Now he's after this large Victorian table, but is the price going to be too high? 700 quid. Bargain. Uh... Seven hundred. Seven. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a deal at that. That's fine. Okay. Great, thanks, guys. Next place, please. And it's upstairs to the old servants' quarters. So it's more storage. Okay, it's more storage, but we have. I can see there's a few bits in here already. Uh, these are, mm -hmm. these are the same lights that are hanging in the hallways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love those. These English brass Moorish-style turn-of-the-century pendant lamps could fetch a thousand pounds. Are these for sale? Would you yeah. want to get rid of? You're not using these anymore. No. No. no, no. You're really good on your prices. What would you like for these ones? Do you think about um, an hundred each. A hundred each. Hundred each. Hundred each. Hundred each. Hundred each. Can we do two fifty the three? What about 260 the three? Oh, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, hang on to that one for me. One, two, three, four. Yes. 260? 260. Deal. Stuart is good on his prices. He's tough and he looks you right in the eye and he goes, I want this much. And I like that. The seller. Oh, OK, great. That, one, that table's no good. Grab all that. It's a bit too basic, that. No, nothing in here, guys. Nothing in here. Oh, now you're talking. Yeah, Typical school seller. And this is prime hunting ground for me, really. It's going to be the place where I'll find, hopefully, volume. That's really where it's at, really, money-wise, for me today. Oh, hello. So this piece here really interests me. Um, it's just the condition is appalling. This oh, early gotcha. Victorian copper globe lantern holder would have been mounted on one of the lamp posts lining the driveway of the school. After some very expensive glass restoration, it could sell for £350. It'd have to be a project price, yeah, which is a shame. I'd rather give you two grand for a good one. Yeah. Mm. We'd rather take uh, yeah, two grand. It'd be a lot easier for all round, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, it? It's worth £150 to me, no more. It's a project. That's where I'm at with that one. OK. Well, we'd, we'd accept that. Yeah, yeah right. definitely. No, that, that's fine. We'd need to get this area clear. And... Sure. OK. It's good to see it go to a good home and be refurbished and then sold on. Before the salvagers leave, Laurie and Stuart have one more thing to show them. Ah, uh, you, you really want to get rid of this? Yeah. This hand-carved pedestal would have held a decorative sundial or globe. It could be worth 1,800 to 2,500 pounds. Go on, then, hit me with a figure. Cos I've, I've also got to get it out. Yes. Yeah. Which is going to be pricey. And yeah. what do you think to about 2,000? Um. No. Um, don't want it that badly. OK, how badly do you want badly. it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you a really cheeky low bid. OK. Because I'm going to have to. Um, £750. Oh, that is low. It is low. I just know what I think I can get for it without that. And that's the point. It's a nice pedestal. But to be honest, I don't think we could, um, we, we could let it go at that. It's going to cost me 450 quid plus of that to get it moved. I'll go to 1,000 quid and then I'm 1,500 pound in and I think I can get 2,6 for it when I sell it. I know it's, I know it's not a lot. There's no point in me buying something I can't sell easily. There you go. That's honest. Yeah. 
OK. Sure. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Right. Today has turned into something I absolutely didn't expect. Uh, I've come to a school to buy some old chairs and tables and simple things, and I've walked away with several items which are incredible, rare, interesting, beautiful, desirable, and I'm over the moon. One of the best I've had for a while. Thank you. No, well, thank you. Much appreciated, really. Lovely stuff. Thank okay, you. Take, take care. care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Happy? Static. Did you buy enough? Um, no. It's all very much my type of stuff. Very, very simple. Extremely classic with an edge. It's just wonderful. Back at base in Conway. Rebecca and her daughter Charlotte are intrigued to see what Drew's brought back from the school. Oh. It's a post-mounted yeah. lantern. Yep. Unfortunately, I mean, look at all the, you know, this is just deteriorated here, so it's a wafer thin, literally just gone. So we'll just sell it straight into the trade, as it is. Mm. Oh, Mr. Pritchard, this is lovely. Just yeah, one of my oh. absolute favourite things I've bought in years. They just tick all the boxes. They are. They're stunning. Don't know why. Just every now and again, something gets you, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. Isn't that just wonderful? Inset caster, tilt top, English, second half of the 19th century. Yeah, love it. There's more. But I'll need the boys for this one. I'll have to go and get Shall Gavin. Shall I go and get Gavin? I'll go and get them now. Don't worry. Okay. You're lucky to see this. Because no. it's not like this no. every week. You all right with that, too? Yeah. Where do you want it, Drew? Just bring it, uh, just bring it straight in. You need wider doors, Drew. It's not had a hard life. Fab. One problem. I know, ink. ink. Which will have got... We'll have a problem getting that out, to be honest with you. You've had one of your best days ever, I think, Drew. Got some mm. really quirky stuff. Right, better start selling it then. With a hole burnt in his pocket, but good items bought from the school, Drew's ready with more cash for his next call-out. It's a 200-mile drive south to Cardiff. The city dates back to Roman times. Later, it was at the forefront of the Industrial Revolution and the coal industry. Today, it's a thriving international city. We are in our nation's capital, beautiful city of Cardiff, and we're off to see Celtic Props, yes. and they are the largest and best prop hire firm in Wales, bar none. I'm Sean. I run Celtic Prop Hire. We hire props to anyone who needs props for their productions. Everything from medieval to modern day, really. We try and uh, encompass everything. Hopefully, there's uh, a few items here that will that will catch his interest. Hello. Sean. Yes, I'm Sean. Nice Drew. to meet you. How are you doing? Nice, nice to meet you. Hi, T. Hi, T. How are you? Um, blimey, we've been to a lot of prop houses, but this is this is huge. Yes. Are we all right to have a look around? Yeah, absolutely. Have a, have a little first. wander. I like the way you've themed everything. Yeah, it helps when um, when designers are propping, if they can go to one area and they can see the choice of everything in the, in the same place. So, so you've got weapons. Yes. Coffins. coffins. Okay. This is our Welsh Tacky Welsh dresser. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Welsh Welsh dresser. <laughs> so how long has it taken you to build all this up? Well, we started in '99, so um, this is where we're at now. These are like, I mean, that's quite. This sort of thing. Do you get a lot of call for these? They are very popular, uh, the, the trolleys. Very popular means not for sale. Unfortunately not. That's this furniture in here. Yes, there's some, uh, some old refectory-type tables. 
that's a, a really, really old oak table, refectory yeah. table, that somebody's cut in half. That's, that's a bit of a shame. Mm. But look at the wear on there, you see. Look at that. You know, sort of, you can't make that up easily. No, it's, it's, I mean, it's age. real wear. Does this one hire well? Yes, so yeah. What would this hire out for? Generally for about £150 pounds okay. for a week. So if I gave you three weeks' worth? I'd probably hire it more than that over a year. Really? Yeah. How about if I give you four weeks' worth of hire? 600 quid. Unfortunately, it's still not getting... Really? Yeah. Right at the back, there's a really, really good table. Um, it's not particularly old, it's not particularly rare, but the condition, size and style right now is really attractive to me and something I can sell easily. I'd really like to buy this. I really would. Drew and T are in the capital city of Wales, Cardiff. And at Celtic Prop Hire, Drew is keen to spend money. Very popular means not for sale. Unfortunately not. But can he persuade manager Sean Bundy to part with any of her stock? I'd really like to buy this. I really would. This oak refectory table from the early 20th century has been hired out frequently, but is still in good condition. It could fetch £2,500. To be honest, I'd probably go to, like, 750, 800 quid for it. Really? I really would. I don't know how tempting that is. I'll be honest, it's a little bit tempting. I thought so. I can't <laughs> go any more. No, that's, that's fair enough. Is it something I can think about? Yeah. OK, well, okay. please, please do think I about will, it. I will, I will consider that. Please do think about no, it. No, seriously. One thing I'm always looking for is good, untouched original tables um, of a refectory style. What we found in there is exactly that. It's oak, it's English, it's turn of the century, and it's never been touched. Blimey. I like this. Look at this, T. I'm a sucker for old toys, particularly the old tin plate cars. I've got hundreds of them. Oh, action men. No, I had one of those. So you got real gripping hands. Yeah. Oh, I like these. These are called lay figures. This is a new one, unfortunately. Um, if this was a real one, uh, I'd, be, I'd be foaming at the mouth trying to buy this. They do, they're, they're extremely fashionable, I love them. You don't have any more we've, sort of mannequins and things like that? We have got um, a few period mannequin heads that were ah. probably for, uh, like, a hat shop or something. You do? Yes. Those so, I'd like to see. Yeah. The mannequin heads are a little bit a little bit buried behind these shelves here. So just uh, be careful. Oh, possibly they were for hats or... Yes. I'm quite sure. Yeah, haberdashery shop. How many have you got? Six? Mm-hmm. I like that. They're all right, aren't they? One mannequin head or milliner's display, whatever you want to call it, it's all right, you know. But six, people can use them as decoration. Collections is something I always do. These 1920s wig stands are made of upholstered linen over a wooden buck. As is, this collection could sell for £500. Let's get them out. There's also something else I've seen in here. Oh, OK. What might that, that be? really like? I'll bring it out. OK. I'll bring it out. All right. Tucked underneath the staircase is a turn-of-the-century French child's mannequin with articulated arms. Unbelievable. Well... There was, this was lurking in the back there. Yes. That was donated to us, and we were never quite sure what it, what it was. It's and just a it, child's mannequin for, for selling children's clothing. For, for That's all it is right. for a shop window. This antique wooden and paper mache child's mannequin would have sat in a shop window in the early 1900s. With original shoes, socks, shorts and vest, the diminutive decoration could fetch £500. That I like. Uh -huh. Ever hired it? Doesn't look like it. No, we, ha we haven't actually had it that long, but uh, no, we haven't. Never hired it? No. OK. Well, tell you what, we've got how many of these things? One, two, three, four, five... And there's one that buried, which T will have to go and get. How much are these, then? For the lot? For the six? Mm-hmm. 100 quid? Yes. Happy? Happy. This little fella. The little fella, OK. The little fella. It's got a good sort of look to it. Could we go 100 again on him? It's a pretty fair bit, actually. It, it is. It is. Because I want him. Right. 
OK, I think that's fair. I'm, yeah. I'm happy with You're that. You're happy with that? Yes. Great. Thank you. Deal. Great deal. Um, what about that table, then? I have to be honest, I'm leaning to not selling the table. Right. But I'm still considering if that's... OK. ..all right. I'll always leave that table open. I'll buy that. OK, fair Just, enough. I'll take it. Sean, Very thank good. you. It's been a pleasure. Wonderful nice to meet business. You. Thank you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Okay. See you again. Bye-bye. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. What's your favourite thing we bought today, then? Uh, the little Charles mannequin was a great find. A surprising find, to be honest with you. And it sort of goes with those millinery heads. And both of them were the right price. It's been a reasonable haul from Celtic Props, but not hugely profitable. So, in the quest for bigger and better stock, it's on to the next location and to the small market town of Whitchurch in Shropshire. We're going to see a guy called Phil who owns a classic country house. It's been in the family since 1843. I moved up with my wife and kids from London four years ago. And we've uh, restored it and opened it as a wedding venue whilst trying to keep it as a family home. There's some outbuildings and some garages where there is quite a lot of stuff that we haven't found a home for, um, old and new, and Drew may well find something in there. Iskoid Park, which translated means park beneath the trees, is set in 750 acres of land. It's been in Philip's family for seven generations. The common denominator in these houses, hopefully, is scale pieces tend to be a bit bigger. Right. So larger tables, larger bookcases, things like that. Yeah. And I really like things of scale, um, and country houses really do that. Right, then, let's go. Hi, Drew. Hi. Welcome to, to the Skoid. Right. Hi, Come in. Beautiful. Lovely. This yeah. is amazing. What a great place. The house looks fantastic as you come down the driveway here. Well, thanks very you much. You were asking, how old is it? Is it mid-1700s? Yeah, it, the oldest bit is about the beginning of the 1700s. So was a lot of this furniture here? Yes. We have sort of sifted through a lot of the furniture and tried to keep all the sort of the heart and soul of the, mm. of the house. Yeah. But we've also tried to put a bit of a sort of contemporary spin on it and bring it into the to the modern age. This is a it's beautiful. Beautiful. Ah. Oh wow. Um, well, this, this is lovely. Is sort of our kitchen, sitting room, living room, dining room, everything. This is um, very cool. And what we've tried to do is is we've actually done our own sort of bits of restoration. These bells were um, in very bad nick. Yeah. Uh, and these were the old housekeeper's cupboards. Uh, oh, that, got, I, yeah. that's lovely, isn't it? it is, that's it wonderful. Is. I love those drawers at the bottom there. See, with the dummy sort yeah. of drawers. It's, that's one drawer. Very homely room, is yeah. 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 You want to hang out in here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it yeah. feels yeah. good. good. Shall I show you a few of the, yeah. the guest bedrooms? Please. So this is the Fox Glove room. Oh, beautiful. Um, wow. So it's just yeah. the, the, the night the, before the wedding, the bride stays here, does she? Yeah, sometimes. That's interesting. Um, Look at that. Yeah. The, the, in fact, the whole design of this room is, is sort of taken from from this from and that. the colours. Interesting. Uh, this mm. is quite, quite. This is a. It's actually ah, Lou. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> the hat's off to you. It's lovely. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. But. As usual, um, we're here to look through the outbuildings, yeah. see if there's any old furniture or items that you don't want anymore that possibly of interest to us. Sure. So are we able to go and have a look at that? Yeah, let me show you the way. Okay. As it's the family the home, home Philip doesn't want to sell anything from the main house. But there are plenty of outbuildings for Drew to have a route around. Yeah. Nice, but... No. If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Right. So 
a gun cupboard, Philip. Yeah. Yeah. Tricky things to sell gun covers because there's not an awful lot else you can do with them. Not that have guns in them. Um, no. OK, let's leave that then. Okay. Let's leave that for now. Is there another shed to go to, Philip? Um, yes. So, this is something that was in the house. Um, ah, nice, very big old table. It was kitchen prep. God, it's massive. It's huge. It's, it's a really big whopper. table. It's low, it's, isn't it? Uh, it's, it, yeah. Missing its drawer from this end. It's very low, the table. God, and it's rotten as hell. The, the, the legs are literally woodworm holding hands, aren't they? Yeah. That's, that's holding that up. This classic 19th century oak kitchen table would have been used by the cook of the house to prepare food. After extensive restoration, it could sell for around £2,000. How much is a really good top going to cost me? Hell of a lot. Um, <laughs> I've gone right off it now. It's not that good. <laughs> it needs work, but, you know, you can't buy character like that. Do you know what? I can. <laughs> <laughs> I make a living out of it. I think, though, because it literally is just the top, the legs are totally shot. Yeah. And they're way too small. I think we're looking at... four quid. <laughs> yeah. I'd be sticking at that figure as well. Um, so, can, I, can we... I'll, let me have a think. OK. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. How, how long do you need? <laughs> <laughs> I can buy tops. I can buy good parquetry oak tops in France for 400 quid. So, you know, um, that really is top dollar for me. We've got a few more outbuildings to go through. Fingers crossed. I mean, really, you know, I, I could really do with pulling something out of today. Garage. Okay. So this is this old mirror that was above the table I've just shown you um, in the old kitchens. Yeah, that's a whopper, isn't it? Yeah, very long and very heavy. Yeah, it's got this distressing on there, which I don't mind actually. I quite like it. Uh, sort of, you know, authenticates it, doesn't it? Yeah. This large 19th century wood trimmed mirror is slightly distressed. With some restoration, it could be worth £1,500. It's a great big mirror from a great big country house, and that's exactly the sort of thing I was looking for. You'd like to tell me how much you'd like me to pay for it? Um, £1,200. £1,200 is going to be too much. I was thinking more £500. So, We're only £700 apart. Yeah. OK, tell you what, look, if we did... Um, let, let's go sort of, you know, halfway, 600 quid. 650. Done. Sold. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, get your tape measure out. Yeah, I'll have to have a measure of that. Yeah, that is a whopper. Uh, do you want to start getting the mirror on? I'll, uh, I'll you get do that. Round, yeah. And, and uh, it out. We can go and have a game of croquet. Talk business. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in, uh, uh, yeah. in a while. Don't exhaust yourself. No, we won't, mate. We won't, mate. You just don't, don't break that mirror, whatever you do. <laughs> right, then, go first, then. While Philip and Drew have a gentle knockabout, T and a helper from the estate have the delicate task of moving the mirror. Closest to the post wins. Oh, no. oh, that's quite good. Well, that's better. What have we got to sort out? The big table, what do you want to do with that? I'm not sure if it's worth, worth me selling, selling it to you for that okay. price, just because, you know... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To replace, to replace it's this. It's worth more to, to sure. replace. Well, but... I'm going to leave the table then, so that's OK. Yeah. But can I... What, what would happen if, um, if I could get you to restore the table? We could, yeah, we could and restore it for you. you. i pay you to restore... That would be fine. We'd be happy to, to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. glory. Absolutely, yeah. We... Double whammy today. Uh, I've bought a fantastic mirror that I'm over the moon with, and I've also picked up a restoration job. We don't do many, but I'll be happy to do that one. So we'll make a few quid on the mirror, we'll make a few quid on the restoration. Everyone's happy. <laughs> I'd love to see what the, the other side of this frame looks like now. Today, we'll turn a profit. Not quickly, but it will. 
Um, I've got an exceptional item that can never be bad. Um, that's what we're always looking for. I want the exceptional, I want the quirky, and I want the best of the breed. And it may not be the best, but it's certainly one of the biggest. It ticks lots of boxes for you, doesn't it, that mirror? What's that? Well, it's big, it's heavy, and it's dirty. Yeah. <laughs>so now we've opened up the grain, we just paint some acid on. This will suck out the stain. I mean, with the ink stain, there's still a few sort of traces of it, but it just looks like part of the table now. And it's ready for Drew's approval. I'm really pleased with this. It's come out better than I thought. I hate telling Alex that he's done a good job, but unfortunately he's done a good job. That means he's going to put an extra zero on the bill. <laughs> Drew's had a tip-off about a potentially lucrative lead. It's back in the van and a five-hour drive to the 2,000-year-old city of Exeter. We're off to see a guy called Chris Strong, who runs Fagin's Antiques. I've never been here before, but it's been around for, oh, I think he's been down here about 20 years now. It seems that Drew likes the, uh, the unusual and uh, part architectural, you know, part fun. And I think he'll love it. <laughs> I think we're probably in the right place looking at it, too. <laughs> Chris. Hiya. Hi, Drew. Drew, how you doing? Hi, right? Chris. I'm T. How are you doing? Hi, T. Right. Chris. Great place. I've never been here before. It I've is. I've passed isn't it? it so many times on the motorway and never called in. Yeah, that's what everyone says. It's huge. It's worth it when you get here, though. I it? think so. Straight away, I'm seeing stuff. I go, God, I like that, I like that, I like that, I like that. It's brilliant. Yeah, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> Fagin's was established in 1976 and its extensive collection houses everything from architectural salvage in the basement to art and taxidermy in the attic. If you like this room, it's my favourite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is great. Super place. Super. Thanks. Very much my type of stuff. That, I like that. The chemist. The chemist sign. I love that. So this is a belter. It's really big, and it's just that single word, chemist. It's a cool word. It's got lots of different connotations, you know. Looks more like shop fittings than sales pieces. It hasn't been for sale because... Yeah. Um, I've always kept a chemist shop here. Yeah, yeah. And that just sets it off. But yeah. it is for sale if you want it. What sort of money is it? 600. 600. I thought you were going to say five. Um... Don't forget, you're the first one I've suggested a price to. <laughs> Am I the first one to ask? No. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good piece, then. This mahogany sign with gilt-carved lettering would have hung outside a 19th-century chemist shop. It could fetch £1,200. Can I give you a bid on it? If it's not too harsh. It's not going to be too harsh, to be honest with you. You can I, knock I, a couple of quid off, if you like. What, 400 <laughs> um, I'm at 450. No, I really like it. And yeah, it's really I do useful, too. Yeah, so yeah, you're yeah, up yeah. against that. Yeah, I know. And I've got I know, a I feeling know. that that's about what it cost me. Mm. You know, but um, it's a tricky I'll one. I'll do a 550 for you. 525 is an opening offer. So, all right. Fab thing. Fab, fab, fab. That was good of him to sell me that. He didn't have to. You know, it's a really good piece of his display in the shop, and I appreciate it. That head up there as well, is that ceramic? What's that one? Which one? The one in the, the middle? The sort of this very sad-looking yeah. face. What's that? Is it... There's three more there. Yeah. Oh, were they plaster? Yeah, and they're death masks. They're all hung. 
Bob in Jail, I think it was. Really? And they're signed. And it's... I think they were 1848, so... Really? Yeah. Can we get one down and have a look at it? I've read about them, I've seen them on the TV, and I've seen them in magazines and books and auction catalogues, but I've never owned one. Instantly, that's got my attention. England's most prominent phrenologist, James Deville, cast these four masks in the mid-1800s from prisoners' heads after they'd been executed. Known as death masks, they're part of a rare 300-piece collection now lost. Sold as a package, they're worth around £3,500. Do you want to look at the one with the, the headdress? Wouldn't mind. That's the main. Wouldn't mind. <laughs> Very handy being tall around here. I see. See what I mean? Yeah. July 7th, 1840. Would you part with these? I do want them all to go together. Though. No, of course, of yeah. course. I mean, this one is what it is. I mean, yeah. the damage is quite bad. But I would need to get £1,200. Drew and T are in Exeter at Fagin's Antiques. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is great. Drew is keen to buy these exceptional mid-19th century casts. But can he offer Chris enough cash to part with this extremely rare collection? I think, to be honest with you, at £1,200, if they're all perfect, I'd probably say yes. They just had such a good story with them. Mm. <laughs> I want them. I can't get to 1200 quid. I just can't. Um, Don't be too brutal, but what's your best on them? 800. No. Because I know, I'm discounting know. this one. I know. Because that one's going to end up in my house well, because I can't sell it. it. Yeah. I can't sell it. But I don't see these ones here at 400 quid each. Very best is a grand. I wouldn't, wouldn't sell them less no. than that. That I'm going to have to think about. Yeah. Let's see what else you've got. It's a huge place here, so I just want to go around and have a look at if everything else you've got. If we put a little got. package together. Then. Yeah, let's start putting a package Perfect. together. <laughs> I really want to buy them, but... How do you gauge a price on something like that? Who knows? I'm not trying to have one over on Chris. I'm just trying to make it easier on my pocket. That's all. We'll go upstairs now. Please, it's look at uh... there. Wow. <laughs> what a brilliant room. Got to be honest, this yeah. has piqued my interest immediately. Ah, it's a metal, metal yeah. one, not the mirror. No. Shame because they fetch uh, big money as well. The original ones, yeah. don't they? I've had the, I've had some great sets. Have you got mirror. Have you got any fairground mirrors in now? No, no. I mean that is one, but this is tin, isn't it? In yeah, the polished tin. That's a shame. It doesn't have a slimming effect on you, Drew. I, I have think. to say. <laughs> I've just done a bit of spring cleaning up here. Sports oh. equipment. Yeah. I like that you've sorted everything out into sort of where it should be. That's oh, there. that's a shame. And again there. Yeah, go in there as well. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's carry on through here then. It's great stuff though, Chris, it's brilliant. Oh, please. Yeah, it's, no, it's really good, I really like I all the... So. I like the mad mix. It's crazy, I like that. Having sifted through everything in the main showroom, Chris then takes Drew and T to the back warehouse. What have we got in here, then? This is where all the stuff comes through a bit of... Uh, mind the, mind the, the rest door, it gets a bit slippy. Where I always want to get to is the place in an antiques business that we've all got, all dealers have got one, which is the back door when the van arrives and it all comes through the back door and you dump it down there until you get time to deal with it, do the work, get it restored, photograph it, whatever. So we go to a huge building which he's got, which Chris is doing restoration and French polishing and uh, he's doing door stripping and... All sorts of things. We've got loads of stuff in here. I like that. Yeah, that's just come in. Drew's expert eye has spotted a set of draftsman's drawers from the 1920s. The unit is made of oak and adorned with copper steel handles and a green leather top. With some restoration, it could fetch around £1,400. How much is it as it stands? Don't you need, don't you need to wipe it? 900 quid. 900 quid. OK, that's too much. I'd have I to buy it for half it. that. Well, I'd see it at nine finished. And I sell them all the time. Once I've 
taken it home, cleaned it, there's absolutely nothing left at all. I'd make a loss on it, strangely. The problem is, uh, um, I nearly gave 500 for it. Did you? That's a shame, because it's a nice one. It's got a couple of very unusual things on it. Um... They are in Boston. Um, yeah. What did we say on the heads? I was at eight on the heads. I'll tell you what, I'll do nine on the heads and mm. six on this, then. 1,500, 6, 59, 9, 15. I think you do really well with those heads, especially with the signature. I really don't know. I yeah. really don't know. I think I think I might be buying them at, at their money. I do. Well, you're I not going to see them again. I do, but I'm not going to see them again. I'm going to squeeze you a bit. £1,400 and we'll have a deal today. I split it, 14 and a half. It's the heads. I know. Fourteen and a half. Good. Deal. Yeah, that's Thank a fair you. one. Thank you. Fourteen fifty, that and, the and all those heads. heads, happy. I've come to one place today, bought a load of stuff. I've spent a lot of money, but I've got a, quite a haul. Quite a haul for the week, and I can't wait to see everybody's faces back at the shop. Thank you, Chris. I hope to see you again. And me. Yeah. Great. Really enjoyed that. Nothing stands still in this business. You're here to buy and you're here to sell. So money in the bank. And I think we're both happy. There isn't an awful lot of big places like that left. They're very, very few and far between. And that was a really good one. And you don't get you just don't go into shops like that and be able to buy 19th century death masks for prisoners. They're just you don't, they're just not out there anymore. That's why, unfortunately, when you find one, it's a very expensive day out. What do you think of that? Oh, wow. That's an absolute That's banter, fantastic. isn't it? fantastic. Chemist sign, great condition, size, says it all. Structurally, it's absolutely sound. It just needs a really good clean. I don't want it stripped. I don't want it repolished. I don't want anything done to it. And there's one more thing we got from there, which is a bit different. They are uh, very early Victorian, so they're 1840, and they're death masks in plaster of people who were hung, of murderers and things like that. When I first saw them, they just, to me, looked like heads. And then Drew said, death mask. Well. Immediately you go, oh. Don't you think they're really they quite beautiful? They are. They're highly collectible as Aren't well. Aren't they lovely? Mm. And this one's even better. That, one, it's that signed, one's lovely. Signed and dated by the maker. That's uh, all one place, Fagin's. One place. You must have been over the moon. Over the moon. Hell of a week. Great trip to the West Country. That was really, really good. It's an especially busy day for salvager Drew Pritchard at his showroom in Conwy, North Wales. I'm investing in a trip to Ireland. Um, sometimes I have to go much further afield to find my stock. It's always a gamble, but it's worth a punt. I might find something, I might not. Will I cover costs? I really don't know. But Ireland's a beautiful country with a load of history, so there should be something there for me. And okay. <laughs> right. Oh, OK. Look after him. Look after I the business. I will. Look after yourself. OK. And uh, remember, not too much of the black stuff. I promise. From Conwy, it's less than an hour's drive to the ferry at Hollyhead. And after two hours in the sunshine on the Irish Sea, Drew and T touch ground in Dublin. Ireland is the third largest island in Europe. The country has made its mark throughout the world, and with its long cultural heritage, Drew's hopeful of finding some traditional Irish antiques. I love Ireland, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful, and it is stuffed full of old houses. The antiques trade in Ireland is particularly vibrant as well. 
The first destination is 60 miles southwest of Dublin, near the town of Mount Trath in County Leash. It's idyllically set in the foothills of the Sleeve Bloom Mountains, the oldest mountain range in Europe. Today, I'm in for a treat. Are you? Yes. We're going to Roundwood House, which is my absolute 100% favourite type of house. It's an 18th century house in the Georgian Manor, and it's totally untouched. The most authentic Georgian Irish experience in the country you can have. Roundwood House dates from 1741, a country house set in rambling gardens and a welcoming committee of animals. Hannah and Paddy Flynn live here with their two girls and run a guest house. Roundwood is our home, it's our business, it's where we're raising our kids, it's uh, everything, it's our whole life. So it, uh, it's fun, but it's hard work. The good thing is, it's completely untouched. The bad thing is, because it was boarded up most of the 60s before you know, they were going to pull these buildings down, I can more or less guarantee there will be absolutely none of the original furniture in there. Yeah, we invited Drew down today to uh, help us unclutter the, the house and uh, maybe I raise a bit of freedom. more importantly, raise some money. <laughs> the house just swallows money, so we're always trying to figure out ways to bring in a bit of extra. Oh, look at this team. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you yeah. go, look at that. Oh, that's so untouched. Go on. Okay. Lovely job. And look. Doggy. Nice how are you doing? Hello, Paddy. Paddy, how are you? Good Very to good. meet you. This is Lucy, our general manager. <laughs> <laughs> and Emily. Hello, girls. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, I love this house already. Oh, I just, just yeah. <laughs> it's more than I expected, particularly this. Oh, brilliant. Glad it's you like it. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Very low maintenance as well. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing money at it constantly. Yes, yeah, yes, I, know, yes. I know, I know, I know. Well, um, you know why we're here. Obviously, we're you know we're here to have a look at some antiques you may have for sale. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'd love to have a look around the house if that's possible. Yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah. 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 Sure. Should we go? So this is the study. Um, oh, it's lovely. Love the, the ceiling. Yeah, the yeah, ceiling's gorgeous. Isn't it yeah. beautiful? Yeah. I can't get over how untouched it is because my particular favourite house is this period. Okay. Oh, really, really early Georgian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the early Georgian stuff. And I think the Irish country houses did it the best. Oh. It was that bit softer, the little details, like the little fanning you've got fanning, in yeah. there, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I like just it. had four hours in the van of that. <laughs> <laughs> I do go on a bit about it, to be honest. Well, you've got some really nice bits in here, actually. So where did all the furniture come from? My parents bought the house furnished in 1983. Yeah. And um, they are very keen auction attenders uh, as well. I so see. they've added to it over the years. It is remarkable. I love it. Great. I love it. It's great. Thank it's you. Just so nice. It's so nice. Would you like but, to buy it? Uh, <laughs> I would. How actually. much do you love it? Yeah. I love it a lot. I love it a lot. <laughs> In the van. Oh, well. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what I do like as well. That pair of candlesticks you got on top of there, where have they come from? No idea. Good no question. idea. Let's see if they're original. We might have to make a call to my parents who are in Greece at the moment. Uh, Cobwebs and all. Aren't they nice? They've not been converted either. I know. I have never noticed them before. <laughs> really? <laughs> How long have you been living here? <laughs> Just a couple of weeks. Then. I think we'll sack. I think we'll sack the cleaner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like those. These mahogany ionic column candlesticks have not been converted to electric, and the drip trays add to their appeal. The pair could fetch around 400 pounds or 450 euros. They're a great color, they're a good size, they're a pair, they're rare, they're interesting, they've got it all. Okay, yeah. if you don't buy them, they'll be on our dining room table. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a bid in of 200, 250 pounds. I like them that much. Yeah, can they go on the list of calling Absolutely. mum and dad? Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, they're, they're number one, and I'd love to see some more of the house because it's just so gorgeous. Brilliant, okay. brilliant. <laughs> You're saying all the right stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
Ah. Oh, this is a lovely room, isn't it? This is one yeah. of the, the rooms you left out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's just, this is nice. That's I like it. I twist. like it. You've been in here nearly 15 seconds now and you haven't made an offer on the mirror. <laughs> hey, not on the mirror? No, not on the mirror, but what you're leaning on. It really? Uh. Yeah. I thought you might go. Yeah. Yeah. It's had a big repair. It's, had, it's, it's cracked at some time in the past. It's been welded and... But see all these little dot welds where it's been? Sure, sure. It's an unusual one with the stick stand at the side. See this hole here? It would have had a bar coming out like that. Sure. And he sticks down, so it's a hall table. There's a hall table? Hall table. It's English and it's 19th century, uh, so it's not right for this house at all. Um, but it's good looking. And you just walk in, put your umbrellas in either side, the water would drip down into the drip trays, you tip the drip trays out, and you'd put your... Well, you wouldn't put your car keys on it in the 19th century, but you'd certainly put something else on top. I think the condition's too bad for me. Which is okay. a shame, because initially I was just like, oh, I love it, but see how that's level? And then it just kicks up where it's been repaired. Sure. It's repaired there and there. This whole section's there. been off at one point. Yeah, that whole piece. OK. And it's missing that element, so I'm not sure whether it's, it's saleable again now. Is it more useful to you in here? It's a unique piece, and it, yeah. pe people do comment on... I think maybe I'm not going to bid you on this. <laughs> OK. But okay. it's good. It's, uh, the casting's pretty crisp. Heavy as well. I'd be careful with it. It might crack again. It, so it, it, it flexes off. quite badly when you... If you Does it? Yeah, if you lift it there, that, that whole section flexes. That's a shame. That's quite nice. Still a nice piece, though. Great. Yeah, they don't turn up that often. OK. OK. All right, next room. <laughs> next. <laughs> so this is the drawing room. This would be the room we greet guests in and they'd have their cup of tea when they arrive. And... Oh, it's lovely. But to be honest, as soon as I walked in, I did see something I quite like the look of. Okay. Straight away. Do you tell? That sofa. The one at the right. back here, OK. Yes. All right. Yeah. It is uh, old. Yeah. Keep and going. And salmon. Those are the two <laughs> things I know I about didn't, it. That's good. It's unusual. Why for? Um, just to have this, the feet like this. Right. That's, that's slightly odd, but it's, you can see where it's all come loose and been hammered back in and it's got whatever ply and whatever underneath there. This Regency sofa frame is original, but the upholstery is modern and would have to be stripped. Even without reupholstering, it could sell for £1,500 or £1,700. Is, is this for something you'd want to part with? That is... Um, for, yeah. Relatable. Yeah. For the right price, I suppose. Yeah. Ah, there yeah. we go. Well, this, is, this is who's in charge. <laughs> this is who's in charge. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to replace it, I suppose, would yeah, sure. be the main thing. Yeah, you'd have to get something that else in there. Uh, we'd need a nice couch, and couches aren't cheap. Um, well, it's really uncomfortable as well, isn't it? See, he's, trying to, he's trying to hammer you down. Oh, yeah. I'll take it. I like it. Oh, it I'll take it. He's trying to hammer you down. <laughs> For me, um, furniture, it's all about just the proportion, really, and just the way it is, the way it sits. And this has got it. It's absolutely dead right. It's in terrible condition, but it's dead right. Um, Price-wise, any idea? No. no. No, I'd have to let you suggest I something. I would say... Drew is in Ireland on a quest to find different and unusual stock for his showroom. The ferry, the diesel and the hotels, we need to make a few grand out of this trip. He's in County Leash at Roundwood House. His offer of €250 Euros on these candlesticks is on hold and he's hoping to make a deal on this Regency sofa. Four fifty, as it stands. Four thousand five hundred. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think again. <laughs> yeah, four hundred and fifty. Yeah, my only concern would be. I think we would really struggle to replace it for that. Price. Really. Oh, so yeah, I think you'd be able to get one for that. Do you? Yeah, I think so. The tricky thing with the sofa is it has to be replaced by, well, this week because the house is being used for weddings at the weekend. So, not the ideal way to buy it. Hannah is going to present Drew's bids to her parents, who are holidaying in Greece. They own the items and will have final say. It's all hinges on this one phone call. It's uh, always tense. There's nothing I can do. Really, I'm just hoping they come back and say, yeah, it's all yours at that money. Hi. Right, how'd it go? So, 
so. Uh, they would be happy to sell the candlesticks. One candle of the candlesticks. Sticks. No, both candlesticks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so candlesticks, yes, yeah. two fifty. Couch, how much? Oh, they didn't say a price didn't for say. the couch. No, mm. they just thought to replace it would be too, too much, much work. Okay. Yeah, just no. Well. No, I could certainly phone back, but I think it would have to be quite a bit more, quite to be a bit honest. More. It's yeah. just not right, it's just yeah. not enough in it. Gutted I'm not taking the sofa home. I love to put classy, interesting, stylish, tasteful items on my website for my clients. And that was it, you know, that was a great item. With only one small purchase made in the house, Drew's hopes now rest on the outbuildings. Coco, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling athletic, you can jump through the window. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I can go through that. Even with my bad knee. Ugh. Where did the table come from? It came from an old school. Locally? Yeah, yeah. Did you buy it? Um, uh, we t they, they were closing down and we uh, showed up with a trailer. It. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Would you consider getting rid of it? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Okay. I think it's pretty twisted. Mm. See how twisted that is now, look at that. So the top's just completely oh, yeah, bent. Yeah. yeah. There's one on the other side as well. Might be drier away from the window. Um, OK, if we can pull this one out a little bit, or is that one easier to get? They're neither, neither easy to get to, are they? No. Are you good there? You OK, buddy? Yeah. Um, ish. I'm about to run out of space. OK, put it down. Yeah. The tables yeah. could be a fabulous find, but after four years in the barn, are they in good enough condition to buy? That feels very steady, but that I know. all right, that one. Yeah. I think I should be able to get my... Be able to sit underneath that. That one feels about right. Do you want a chair? <laughs> oh, thanks, T. <laughs> nice. For that. Just check the height. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. Spot on. Yep, yeah, that's great. I can use that as long as it can be used as a dining table. Done. done. Or kitchen table. We need to remove the chewing gum underneath it or leave it? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's one of the pleasures buying anything from schools. They're always caked in chewing gum. Yeah. They always are. Turns out the tabletops are solid oak plank. They were once used as school woodworking tables, so are covered in nicks. But once restored, they could be worth about £2,800 or €3,200. Euros. What did you pay for it? We didn't. The price of petrol to get to the school. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, this is all luck money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the pair? Sure. 300? Yeah. That's good. I'm sure, I'm sure we should say 350. Oh, yeah, sorry. You can't sorry. do 400. No. <laughs> 350? No. <laughs> it's really easy. 250. 250, yes, yeah, sold. <laughs> yeah, sure. But no, I'll definitely give those a try, for okay. sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> and you. <laughs> Cheers. Today's paid off. It's been worth it just to get those pair of tables. They'll sell quickly and easily because they're perfect size for anybody's kitchen. You can get a lot of people around them. They're cool looking. They've got a great story. That's great. Great day, very, very happy with the way things went. We have a, a leaking roof at the moment that needs urgent attention, so I think it'll probably go towards that. And then to the pub. And then to the pub. <laughs> I could quite happily turn native and, and come and live in Ireland. Definitely. Yeah, especially in a house like that. Yeah, quite easily, quite easily. What do you want to do now? Well, what we could do is, as part of our culture exchange, we could yeah. go to the local library and read up on some things. Right. Or we could go to a local hostelry and speak to some people and maybe try the local delicacies. I like the idea, but I think a pint of the black stuff for the pair of us tonight. Oh, okay. We deserve it. We've got a good day today. Good day. After a night of relaxation, 
It's less than an hour's drive north from Roundwood to the town of Tullamore in County Offaly. A buzzing little town, this, isn't it? It is busy. Pretty good. I'm liking it. I like it. Tullamore is surrounded by Ireland's oldest primordial oak forest and home to the imposing Charleville Castle. This is a full-on, drop-your-pants, 18th-century, Gothic castle. It's not a house that looks like a castle. It's a castle, in the old-fashioned sense of the word. Starting in 1798, it took 14 years to build this grand castle for the Earl of Charleville. But with no heirs, it was eventually abandoned, and by the late 20th century had fallen into disrepair. The castle would have been lost if not for a team of volunteers led by owner Bonnie Vance and engineer Dudley Stewart. The great thing about Drew coming here is that uh, <laughs> there's so much stuff that uh, in, there's too much stuff in the building, and uh, if he can find something and and it can kind of contribute to the chapel roof, I mean that'll be just brilliant, you know. Oh my life! Look at that. We're on for a good day. I'll tell you what, we're on for a long day. Look at the size of this place. Best thing to, yeah. to, to describe it. I don't know where to start, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, no, neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll ever finish. It's incredible. Can we have a tour of the building before we go sure any further? Can. I'd love to see some more. Sure, no yeah? problem. Where through here? Come into the gallery. Blimey. It's seriously impressive, isn't it? Ah, oh, she's a beauty. Yeah. <laughs> What state was it in then? How much was left? Well, bits and pieces were off. Um, the colours were rather um, 60s psychedelic. Oh, really? <laughs> um, and the, while we were up changing the colour, we did any plaster restoration that we needed to do. So, how long have you been on this then? Uh, 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. We do fundraising, events, events, uh, festivals, tours, haunted paranormal nights. Um... <laughs> anything to turn anything, a quid. Almost anything we can. <laughs> good, good. And, uh, I mean, that's why I'm here, to try and help you, okay. help you, uh, help you along. If I can Great. buy some stuff off you, you never know. Great. Um, and also, I believe there's a ceiling here that's by William Morris. Yes, there is, yeah. Could we have a look at that? Sure. That'd be okay. Uh, it's here. to the dining room. Ah, uh, I see. It doesn't yes. look like William Morris at all. Oh, uh, it's the stenciling. Ah, uh, that makes sense yes. now. It's all original, except for the lilac. William Morris is a very particular hero of mine. He started so much of the arts and crafts movement, re-energised Britain to make beautiful things by hand. He apparently decorated that room in the 1890s for a wedding, so he did the carpets, the wallpaper, and the stenciling to the ceiling. That's... The whole thing is just astonishing. There's not a day that I walk around this building that I don't notice something new. Uh, I, I'm amazed by Bonnie and Dudley to even think about taking this on. You know, it's a lifetime's work here, times ten. It's incredible. Really, really brave. Ah, so what's, what's this room, then? Uh, this is the library. Oh, yeah. These are fab, aren't they? We're not ready to do a lot in here without a lot of assistance because it's original colour yeah. and it's original paint. Yeah, yeah. So this, so it's just stabilising it. This is completely authentic. I see. Yeah. I, won't, I won't try and buy the bookcases then. Those are wonderful. So pure Gothic and in such incredibly untouched condition that they're a real rarity and something I would definitely buy. But obviously the best place for those is exactly where they are now.
It's absolutely fabulous. It is. Even under the stairs is carved. None of the original pieces can be sold, but up the 19th century staircase, in an area off limits to tourists, there are rooms packed with bric-a-brac collected over the years. So what have we got here? These are just storage areas. Have a sift through. Ferret mode now. <laughs> oh, good luck to him there. <laughs> There's plenty to rummage through, but is there anything to buy? There's the, the sort of a little air of frustration creeping in, or, well, not frustration, more sort of thinking, oh dear, because everything I'm seeing is just sort of no good at all. Drew and T have left Wales behind and crossed the sea for a shopping trip in Ireland. Today, they're near the town of Tullamore, an hour west of Dublin, to visit Charleville Castle. The Gothic architecture is stunning. Seriously impressive, isn't it? Ah, oh, she's a beauty. Yeah. But after hours of rummaging, Drew is still empty-handed. OK, so nothing in there, I'm afraid. Should we carry on? More to see? In a building of this size, not to have found something by now is uh, surprising because it's just huge. You know, there's so many corners you could just stuff something into. But, hey, it's been here a long time. A lot of people have been through it. You just have to keep your head down and just keep going. Up one more flight of stairs is the nursery. Ah, was this, this was nursery. always the nursery, was it? Yes, it was. Could this room finally yield a purchase? OK. Where did these come from? These came from uh, an old house of my mother's, and they were in the attic. They've been repaired, as you can see, several times. Yeah, OK, this chair's got a lot of different styles mixed up in here, to be honest with you. But what it does have is this fruit wood inlays that it's got here, mm -hmm. and all the different ones. That's particularly nice work. Um, they're probably English, but they've got a sort of Dutch influence to them as well. And I think you're right, they're of the 18th century, of course. Had the chairs been in just stable condition, with no restoration on them, even broken with no restoration, there'd be something I'd have a go at buying, for sure. It's unfortunate the repair work that's been done on them has actually done way more harm than good. Way more harm. You could easily throw a grand at these and get, and get nowhere. Mm. And, you know, it's, it, it wouldn't be financially viable, really, to do those. Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. It, it's, re it's really annoying when I see pieces of furniture or anything at all that's had amateur restoration done that has ruined the piece. It's something we see all the time, and I wish people would just not do it. This way. In a last-ditch attempt to find something, Bonnie and Dudley take Drew and T to the cellars. Right, be, be careful as we go yeah. through there, sir. This is a oh, film area props. of film props, Castle Palooza, storage. And uh, mind your head coming down here. I Bring won't have a cares. problem. Before T says it. <laughs> I have said a word. Uh, looks more promising. Oh, I don't know. I'll this stop is just here. stuff <laughs> from everywhere. This was once the dining area for Castle staff, complete with mealtime morality lessons painted on the walls. I like that. I'm just going to have that in my workshops. <laughs> <laughs> Waste up what not, or you're sacked. And in no time, Drew has spotted something. The cabinet may be of interest. Where's that from? Inside the building here? Yes. <laughs> ah, I see. That's from the old uh, bakehouse kitchen area. OK, I like it. It's good original stuff. Have you got any more furniture like this? It's, it's really nice, actually. I love this sort of detail on the front of the shelf there. Yeah. That's really quite nice. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the problem... Part, part of a big set of furniture fits out a whole room. Yeah, it's an original to here. So that's... You can't sell yeah, that anyway. No. no. 
we have to save it. Yeah, well, it's true. I understand. That's a shame. Here. So is this, oof, is this something that, um, this obviously isn't original? It's more like quite yeah. nice. No, it's not original. It's like 900, that. Yeah. Do you want to sell it? I think if it goes to the roof of the chapel, it could happen. <laughs> so gonna, it, it, might, it might do three or four slates. Yeah. I never usually bother with these things, but this one's been outside for years and patinated to a really wonderful colour. Yeah, well, I wonder if somebody could actually... Remake that glass? No, it's not worth making the glass be way too expensive. It's a shame because it's yeah, way too expensive yeah. to have a cylinder blown like that. It's just uh, it's just too much. This lantern dates from about 1900, the height of Art Nouveau, with its distinctive whiplash curves. Without the glass, it's worth around 350 pounds or 400 euros. How much do you want for that then, Dudley? You know what you're looking at. I have no idea what we're looking at. <laughs> We'd have to get your technical advice. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get involved in this. If I get it wrong, Drew shouts at me. Yeah, he'll, he'll go. Yeah, and don't. it comes out of my wages if I get it wrong. Every time you speak, it costs me money. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that's probably worth, to me, um, as it stands without the glass, uh, 60. Ah. Actually, you could be 80, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Um, Seven, as it's going on the roof, 70 quid. All right. Is that all right? All right. Deal? You happy with that? Yeah. Thank you very much. There you go. Cheers. Good. I'm cool. glad out of all this chaos, you one found some thing. order. One thing. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do for me. That's fine. Would have paid an awful lot more for it if that cylinder of glass with the little roundels in it, the bullions in there, was complete, but it's not. So I've got to literally take that out and sell the thing as it is. If Drew can find something to buy in this last room, it might make his Charleville trip worthwhile. Yeah, I found something I like. Is that one of yours, Dudley? Yeah. Dudley had been using this Singer sewing company stool in his workshop. They were mass-produced for use by factory workers at the turn of the 20th century. Now it's worth about £150 or €175. Euros. OK, you'll donate it to the castle, but... And therefore, you can, can now... Bid you on it. Bid the castle. 50. I have to... I have to move you, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> there you, there you, go. Go. you don't have to move me. I can go down. <laughs> All right, well, we make it 60, I and mean, that's the same as the last. For the roof, Thanks. to the chapel. Down the road to, for this chapel. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 70. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's a fair deal. That's a... Cool. All right, well, let's take that. I'll be able to sell it quickly and easily. It won't be around for long, that's for sure. That, that I know. I was very surprised with uh, Drew's discoveries. I mean, this stool is my own. I hadn't thought about it as something of, of value. <laughs> turning out to be quite a fruitful trip with buying good items at good prices that I can't get in the UK as easily as I can here. It's very good. Yeah, I'll take it. Cheers. Right, we're done. Okay. All sorted. Okay. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure to come here today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Your work is wonderful, and uh, I just hope everybody comes and gives you a hand. Hope so. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks for your time. <laughs> we will. Cheers. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. It's been great having Drew here. He seemed to enjoy himself in the castle. I'm happy he found some things he liked. Not a hoard, I'm afraid. So did you enjoy your entire Gothic experience? I thought the house was amazing. I can't believe they're doing all that themselves. Just them and the volunteers. 
unbelievable. The next morning, Drew and Tia are heading from Charleville to the capital, Dublin, land of George Bernard Shaw, Oscar Wilde, and Joyce's Ulysses. Along with literature and dry stout, will it be home to some excellent salvage? We are off today to see Robert Fawcett. He is part of Fawcett Brothers Circus. I've been in the circus since I left school at 16. My family's been in the circus since the dawn of time. I'm the fourth generation in the Irish line of what's Fawcett Circus. One of the oldest, if not the oldest, continuing touring circus in the world. Fawcett Brothers has been going for 125 years. More than just a circus, it's an institution. And Fawcett's has entertained generations of Irish families. Sadly, Drew's not going to see the performance today. But he'll still be entertained as Robert is opening up the storage yard for him. But they've been at this yard, particularly since 1956. So, they've called us in because they're desperate for space. They want to have a bit of a clear out. What I'd love to find today is some old traditional fairground art or banners or signage. This is definitely the place. It's big. Bigger than I thought. Large. Hello there. Hello. Hi. Robert. Hi. Drew. How are you? Good to meet you. I'm great, thanks. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm T. Hi, T. How are you doing? Good. I'm well, thanks. Thanks for allowing us in here today. No problem. Much appreciated. More than welcome. Much appreciated. I haven't been here in a while myself, actually. Have <laughs> And you've already got a picture of Drew already? Well, there you are now. <laughs> are you interested in that? <laughs> Two clowns. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, obviously, we've come to have a look through all these buildings. Yeah. Well, it's a bit of a collection, and the problem is tidying up. Is a lot. I don't want tidy. I don't want tidy. I like. I like it. There's I'm not no fear that I, I haven't even seen for years. So you're more than welcome to just have a mooch around. They are the original circus lighting. No. They were called a tilly lamp. They can be converted to electric easy. And you know, just the man. There's okay. always a deal. There's always a deal. There's always a deal. <laughs> not for sale, I'm afraid. I know. I know. Don't worry. Okay. What I'm always looking for. I don't know if you've got any. Is the old fairground lettering or banners, anything like that. Do you have any of those? No. A huge paper elephant. <laughs> yep. That's what you need, Drew, is it? You, you need a huge butterfly. In my life. We got any more sheds? How do you fill all this on the back there as well? Well, yeah, we do. Under the massive shed. Well, horses, camels, elephants. Not joke. You're not joking, are you? No, I'm not joking, no. <laughs> it's time gone by. Ah, I've just realised what we're in. We're in the ring. This is what was affectionately known as the practice shed. The practice shed. Wow. Anyway, T, I think you should be having to go on those juggling buttons, please. No. Yeah, come on, you can do this. No, I, well, you, I, have to, you, can, you can juggle, can't you? My speciality with juggling yeah. is the drop. <laughs> 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 I'll try and demonstrate it to you now. Well, he was demonstrating he was. the drop, so he lived up to it too. I'd like to suggest T stick to the driving, because I don't think there's a future in circus for him. All right, so just nip through here, Robert. Yeah, you fire ahead. Mind the dust now. Uh, I think I'll just leave you to it. So far, the back rooms are revealing none of the quality signage Drew's after. Here's my dad's electrical storeroom. I actually uh, haven't been in here in years. Fantastic. I just came in ahead and opened the door. Tell you what, T, can you yeah. pull one of these down? I just want to see what... See this thing underneath? It's that, isn't it? <laughs> these are quite funky, actually. These theatre lights look to be 1930s, but their origin is unknown. Restored, they're worth around £400 for the pair, or €465. Euros. So what sort of money would these be? You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, in this condition, um, if we've got the ones with its uh, yoke on the top of it, um, 
I'd say 50 euros each. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I know it's a, a family run affair, so do you need to check with people? Yeah, well, we'll just have a look around and we'll see what you're interested in and okay. maybe we'll go back to that after. I do a lot of lamps, it's like kid in the candy shop right. for me. Loads of those, loads of those. What about this type of light? Have you got any use for these anymore or not? No idea what they were used for originally. My dad was a little bit of a hoarder. Excellent. So, which is good for you. <laughs> These 1950s industrial light shades always sell quickly. With new galleries and chains, they'll fetch about 180 pounds each, or 210 euros. Well, these ones here, for that, that one there, we'd pay about... about 35 pounds for that one, usually a bit more, but the condition's not so great on this one. I think it's possibly a little bit dented. It's just slightly out of whack. But any like that, that sort of size and this sort of yeah. colour, where that's the sort of money you'll pay for them. OK. So put the, can that go in the pile? Yeah, can you? Um, one other thing I've seen down here, Robert, okay. is these things. What wheels? <laughs> See these big lamps here? Yeah. What were they used for? I don't know. Don't know? I don't know. Again... Oh, can we get one nice. of these out? I know it's a pain, but could, yeah, could I get sure one out? Yeah, we can. Broken as are they in strips? Uh, it's, yeah. it's in strips. It's in strips. It's so is this kaching? It 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 could be. <laughs> this could be kaching for the pair of us. They're cool. That sounds expensive to me now. These theatre spotlights were made in Germany in the 1930s by a respected manufacturer called K. Weinert. Inside, they have hundreds of reflective mirrors that direct the light. Fully restored, the pair are worth around three thousand pounds, or three thousand five hundred euros. Yeah, I, I, oh yeah, look at that. Mm, I feel nice. money. Yeah, it's going to cost you money now, Drew. Go on then. Uh, oh, I'll have to have lunch. And think about that one. <laughs> Tell you what, if I throw a figure at you, <laughs> you would want to be a large figure. Three hundred and fifty euros the pair. Right, I'll have to have a think about that one. Have a think about that one. It's a fair bid. <laughs> From your perspective, my perspective. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I've got to buy it or I can't get out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> These lights just have everything, absolutely everything going for them. If I just got those and didn't get anything else for a whole day, that's worth it. OK, I'd love to see some more. Will I lead on? Yes, please. Oh, blimey. Big. OK. Drew keeps on looking while Robert goes to call his brother for a decision on the lights. This one's from Terrible Nick. That one's Fawcett there again. But it's quite plain, that one. So, no, nothing down here, I'm afraid. That's it. There's nothing else there for me. If I end up getting the lights, it doesn't matter. I could walk away from most of them, but the ones on the floor stands, I really want them. And... I want them because I can actually see them finished. I see them on a, in a trade stand in London looking the part. I have to get those lamps today, they're super. So, so are we having a deal? Drew and T are on the last leg of their Irish expedition. Today, they're on the outskirts of Dublin in the storage yard at Fawcett Brothers Circus. The trip has been a major outlay for Drew. Nope. To make a profit, he needs these theatre lights. So is this kitchen? It, it it could be. But will Robert agree to his offer of three hundred and fifty euros? Okay, so I've had a word with my brother, and I'm just gonna have to push you a little bit on these two. Oh, really? You'll have to round it up a little bit. Okay. We'll be four hundred. Four hundred for those. For those two. Hundred euro. Yeah. 70 quid for those, it's 170. Uh, yeah, for sure, we'll have those. OK. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well pleased with those. Right, see? Yeah. Van Good job. Man. Let's get them on. You've got to put yourself in the way of luck, and today we did that, and we found some lights that I absolutely love. They literally couldn't be any better. happy enough to let go what we agreed on because I'd like to see it have a good home. I mean, I'd love to see them there refurbished and being used as opposed to just rusting away down an old shed. Whatever he passes them on for, good luck to him, he's going to do the work and refurbish them. So I'm happy enough that everyone's got a good deal. So did you like that? 
Excellent. Yeah. Where's Teagon? He's run off with the circus. Oh. My well, juggling was good as well, wasn't it? Juggling? No, it was it was a good two. Oh, fair play. It was a, it was a, a strong three. There you go. Time for Drew and T to bid farewell to Ireland. So it's back on the ferry for the trip home to Conway. Ireland was just what I hoped for. We met some fantastic people and we got some wonderful stock. Lovely colour. It's great, isn't it? Just literally just dust it. Anyway, lots more tea. Have you got anything else in wrap? but there's an awful lot of work to be done. There's some big items in there that need a lot of restoration work, so we need to get stuck into it now. Ollie. Yes. I've got something for you. How cool is that? Aren't they wonderful? Nice, yeah. Best thing is, look in the back. Oh, yeah. Should put the silhouette of Enzo on it. <laughs> oh, yes. It's better than a bat. <laughs> Aren't they great? Those two German spotlights definitely shout retail or restaurant that sort of thing, but definitely they're so impressive that they'll be talked about. Pair of. No. Yes. Look. Oh, Woodwork look at the widths of those planks. Working. They're all oak. The entire thing is oak. The width is fantastic. You think so? Yeah. That's what we're being asked for now. This sort of comfiness of, you know, lots in the middle of your table and big feasts. So they're fantastic. Cup of tea? Sure. Cup of tea, ideally, yeah. They... It's nice, isn't it? Someone could serve you Guinness and Tato's at the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. A few days later, Ollie has made considerable progress on the theatre lights. So that's the, the reflective back. Uh, we've, we've cleaned that up. We're, we're literally doing nothing else to it. There's a few missing mirrors, but we're going to leave them. having some parts manufactured where we can secure the bulb properly. Probably use quite a large filament bulb, um, which will give quite a nice look. Gavin is cleaning the school tabletops. Just a dirty job. I've like been back in the Navy. <laughs> There are decades of dirt, grease and gum to wash clean. Good workout. Next, the graffiti is scraped from the legs and frame, proving that restoration work can be decidedly unglamorous. Spin the mouth. Alex, the French polisher, has the delicate job of bringing out the patina. We're going to use a very, very fine sandpaper and just take the surface off, leaving all the scratches and the character in, but just um, bringing a bit of colour out of it, really. So we'll just get it absolutely glassy smooth and a nice wax, and it'll keep that original look. I mean, no one will know it's been sanded. The wax is applied with a scouring pad. Then it's buffed with a soft cloth. And finally, it's ready for Drew's inspection. You have done, done a very, very nice job on this, Alex. That's perfect, isn't it? It's come out really well, yeah. That's amazing. It'll be done today. Excellent, on the website today. Ollie now has the final parts for the theatre lights and can get them in working order just in time for Drew to have a look. Wow. Good job. That's great. Yeah, just finished. That is really cool. Can we turn it on? I love the bulb. Oh, that's so good. It's better than I hoped for. Oh, look at that. We've gone from a flood to a spot. We used all the original parts. The only thing I've had is a bracket machined, a lamp holder, a bulb, and the cable. It was nice. We thought we were going to have to replace the glass, but we've I kept this. I prefer that. It looks a lot better. It looks a lot better. These will go into the fashion trade. Shop window, Regent Street. Look, 
Just right. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Right. Thanks, all. All right. Cheers. Hello, Drew Pritchards. Drew Pritchard Salvage Business is all about buying and selling. To turn a profit, Drew has to make instant calculations about whether any one item is worth the costs involved. A big part of my job, in fact, my only job, is I'm the buyer for the business. So I very much work on uh, an instant gut reaction. The second I see something, I know whether I want it or not. And also in that second, I have to work out restoration costs, transport, what I can pay for it, have I got a customer, and what I can get for it in the end. Um, it really is the essence of what we do. All of Drew's skills will be put to the test on his first call out to a new contact who's involved with the music business. And T has put a lot of thought into the visit. It's, uh, I've been thinking about antique dealers' favorite musicians. Right. Yeah, I've got George and Michael. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Patina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. And arts and craft work. That is... You have outdone yourself I today. Have, That's yeah. very good. And anything by Bauhaus. <laughs> <laughs> They're on a three-hour drive from Conwy to the tiny village of Elmore, near the city of Gloucester. We are off to see a guy called Amsel. He used to organise raves and festivals. He has inherited a house that's been in the family since the 1200s. So that's quite, quite a long well, time, yeah. yeah. This is Elmore Court. I've lived here for six years. Uh, first two years, I kind of enjoyed it, then realised it was losing loads of money, and now we're undergoing a major refurbishment to open as a wedding and events venue later on in the year. And my family have been here for eons, and there's quite a lot of pressure on me to not cock it up. The house has an incredible assortment of antique furniture, but at this stage of the refurbishment, will any of it be for sale? Drew's here a little bit earlier than um, is ideal, really. I'm kind of nervous about selling anything now, unless I'm absolutely sure we're not going to use it. I think this is our man waiting in the front here by the scaffold. <laughs> I said, don't knock the scaffold over. <laughs> Don't run the owner of the house over, will you? It's difficult to do deal with. <laughs> Hello. That's true. How you doing? Welcome. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Wonderful. You right? You too? Hello. How are you? How are you? you good? Yeah, good to see you, yeah. Welcome. Fab house. It is. Great. Yeah, it's, um, it's a lovely house. It's a beautiful house, isn't it? Yeah. Really, really elegant really as you course. come up. It's wonderful. It's great. Because aren't you building some amazing party room as well? <laughs> yeah, we're building a... Um, Building a completely soundproofed, um, sustainably built building out of rammed earth and all our estate timber. And, yeah. that, isn't um, that amazing? Idea. And the idea is, is that none of the neighbours can ever hear what we're up to, That's which always is a always a good thing. <laughs> Should we go and have a look? Yeah, let's have a look. I'll take you through to the hall. Okay. Okay. Right, so... Uh, wow. This is the hall, which is quite like nice. It. Like yeah. it. It's <laughs> fantastic. What a place. Kind of a workshop for furniture, though. <laughs> Amazing. God, I'm just drooling at half the furniture in here as well. I mean, this sort of thing, obviously, I mean, you know, it's never. You know, I. Uh... That was covered in dust, Drew would buy it off you now. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, no, we, we, we shot polish it up specially for you. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's wonderful. <laughs> but I have to be honest, I know I'm surrounded by all this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful furniture, and I keep getting drawn to the to these, to be honest with you, in the chair over there. One of my obsessions is uh, chairs. We managed to find one real beauty. It's not the most valuable chair in the world at all, but it's incredibly elegant and the proportions are knockout. This is the sort of thing I'm looking for. Right, OK. Um, like sort that. of jaded, <coughs> right. worn country house pieces is what I really like. Well, these are the sort of things that I'm, I... Right now, I'm definitely not sure about whether I'm okay. going to sell. I mean, once we've got everything ready, we'll put everything back together. Yeah. And then there may be... We'll go, actually... You know, this isn't going to yes, work, or it's too fragile because we can have the public in here. Yeah. With Anselm unwilling to part with Drew's favourite items in the hall, they move upstairs to try another room. Oh, wow, look at that. So, uh, what's this room? Another bedroom, or what, what is <laughs> this? This will be a bedroom, yeah. Um, this is called the North Room. OK. Um, a few bits. Um, I tell you what, I do like this. I do like the sofa. 
Um, Indeed. What are your plans for that? Um, I, I mean, if I could afford to upholster it, I probably would, but I probably can't, so it, it's, it's more likely. Ah, good. OK. Um, this I do like the look of. They are... I've reupholstered one of this model before, and it's nosebleed expensive. Yeah. For, it's sort of 1,500 quid plus the materials. Brilliant. Underneath this, I have to say, is a pretty fine sofa. Underneath really, okay. this, Underneath this mess. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's not bad at all. Got these very unusual things here. I think they're called pochettes, I think. It may look tatty, but this sofa is a rare find. Made at the turn of the 20th century by the famous manufacturers Howard and Sons of London, their furniture is held in the Victoria and Albert Museum and the Queen's private collections. Restored, this piece is worth about £3,500. I mean, even in this state, mm. uh, it's worth £700. Really? Yeah. So I'd like to buy okay. it for about £500. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, well... I'll... I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it is what it is. It is what it it's is. It's a great sofa, yeah. but it's in a hell of a state. It's a hell of a state. So what, what do you think? Could be interested. Yeah? Um, How can I tempt I might, you? I might, you know, meet you halfway, but I'd need to... Um, I just need to... We've got our own kind of valuations of things, so I'd probably just check and see, okay. see, what, right. see what the... Uh, see what they insurance say. ...insurance valuation is. Let's I mean, I know so. insurance valuation's obviously yeah. more than sale valuation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> but, um, OK, I'm sure we could... Yeah, we'll come together on something, I'm sure. Yeah. If we're able to buy that piece today, that is the profit for the whole day in one piece. Um, uh, and, and I've got three people I can sell it to straight away. With the deal on hold, it's onto a room piled high with furniture from parts of the house that are being renovated. This is kind of furniture suppository, suppository, depository. Um, uh, so there's loads of stuff under wow. there. That's a pile of furniture, hello, mate. It's like a huge antique dealer's sort of Christmas present wrapped up in a room for me. Ah, ooh. Ooh. Da, 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 da. Oh, great. Cracking table. That's fab like that, like that. Another one of these little bookcases there. Unfortunately for Drew, Anselm isn't ready to part with any of the family history yet. Oh, it's kind of slightly unfair, cos I took Drew up to the porch room and revealed, um, like, a huge pile of furniture and um, said he couldn't buy any of it. Oh, this is, this is, this is terrible. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> being taunted. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, look at that. If I could buy things, I'd have spent thousands by now. Um, happily, I would just get the checkbook out and start writing checks because I would be more than happy to buy as much of this furniture as I possibly could. Oh, come, I'll, back, I'll come, come back, back in yeah. sort of six weeks. Yeah, OK. You know. For the trip to make a financial return, Drew has to convince Anselm to part with something. Drew, let me show you the dining room. There's, I mean, there's a few bits in here. Um, OK. It's mainly paintings, actually, which we store, but... Um, ah, OK. Lots of things, again. Lots of things we need to... Yeah, just... just, just, just All right, I thought I'd just show you. Yeah, just yeah, see yeah. if you've... The, um... The, the, the table that. would be of interest, of course. Yeah. Um, it's a lovely table, it's, isn't it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Great top. Look at that. Come out with timber there, lovely. Yeah. OK. Thank you. OK, this is the family chairs. Family These crest. are all the fa family crests, yeah. Are they what I think they are? I think they might be, yeah. What do you think they are? Chippendale. They are Chippendales. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at. How many have you got? I think there's about 16. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Price of a small family home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, uh, you could buy a very nice car. Uh, okay. <laughs> very nice car. A very nice car. Um, you could buy... Yeah, I thought they were when I, when I saw yeah, them. Yeah, they're, 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 they're really nice and, um... I mean, we do occasionally do use them, but, um, we've got some others made, which we'd normally use. Mm. Yeah, because are. these are too precious, really, I suppose. Yeah, but it's, you, you know, I think you've got to use these things, otherwise, you know, you've just got to use mm. them in the right place. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I walked into a house two years ago and there was a dog sat on a chair. Ah. And I said, do you know what that chair is? He goes, oh, no, just some old chair. 
and uh, I went through to the other room and they had five more and there was two planks between one and they were painting the walls. <laughs> and they were early really? Chinese Chippendale. Oh, really? Yeah, all so of worth them. Worth a fortune. Worth about a quarter of a million pounds. Good <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, and I had to tell them, I couldn't, you know, I had to tell them. I probably could have bought them, but yeah. I had to tell them. Yeah. You know, what well, some tempted. Yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, so nothing more in here for me. No, um, let's uh, see where else we can have a look. Future possibilities, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's all... So we've, yeah. The, okay. we've got a kitchen, it's all Victorian kitchen with loads of stuff, so... Yeah. <laughs> and this, yeah, this is the newest part of the house. It's built in about 1870. Um... Aha. So, yeah. More furniture. Oh. In the jumble, Drew finds another item. What have you found? It's a chair by R. Dawes, D-A-W-E-S, Mahogany Library Chair. It's not so, not his best work, but it's not bad. It's got an interesting shape. Don't know, what about this one? I think it's, again, that's probably a... Um, it's, a it's a less likely, but I'd like to... Take, Just think you know. on it. Rejected again, Drew's hopes now rest on one item upstairs. The sofa, have you managed to have any thoughts on that or valuations? Um, Drew and T are in Gloucestershire, at an historic country house with amazing furniture. That's fab, like that, like that. Another one of these little bookcases there. But none of it's for sale. Oh, this is, this is, this is terrible, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> being taunted. Except possibly this one sofa. The sofa, have you managed to have any thoughts on that or valuations on that one? Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'd be up for selling that to you. So wh what, what do you want to end up well, on? Well, I thought, um, 600 quid. 600 quid? We'll have a deal. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Lovely. Yeah, well, Thank you. That. Don't look forward to getting it down the stairs. Yes. Down the stairs. <laughs> Today, fantastic. Great day. Bought something I absolutely love. Met a really good guy. Put a wish list together of things that would keep my business going for a month if I bought them all. And potentially got a very good customer. And it's a beautiful house too. Love this, like stepping off a yacht. Right, we're done. Thank you well, very much. Thank you, Drew. Pleasure. Lovely to meet you. And you, and you, and you. Come again when, we're, when we have a party. I'll come for a party. Yeah, exactly. Please. Yeah, I'd like that. that, I'd like that. I can make Thank as much noise as possible. Today. Yeah, lovely to meet you. And uh, good Charles. luck with it. It's uh, super. I'm Thank sure it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, yeah, I think it will be. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thank See you. Cheers, then. It was really good to um, have Drew here because um, he was really impressed by everything, and um, we sold something. I've got a little bit of money to help pay for all the building works. So, yeah, please, good day, happy days. That is going to be the ultimate party destination. Definitely. Isn't it? Yeah. That's got Great. everything. It's got that old world glamour. It's cool. The rooms are nice. There's Definitely. going to be some yeah. great parties there. Are we going to any? I'm, I'm going to some, yes. Are you? Yeah, oh. you're not. You're okay. busy. You've got work to do. I'm going to sleep in the van, have I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can come, you can come pick me up. <laughs> Terribly kind of you. Before anyone does any partying, Drew and T have another stop to make. The next day, they travel two hours north, past Birmingham, to the village of Barwell in Leicestershire. They're knee-deep in farm country. We're in Leicestershire to see a guy called Dale, and uh, he's got a place called Inglenook Farm, and he buys and sells um, sort of horse equipment and tack, and they do livery and... Oh, you do tack as well. I, do, I, do, I don't do tack. <laughs> I do top-class antiques, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what he's thinking of, isn't it? Yeah. And he's asked us to come down and have a look. I sent Drew an uh, email and a couple of pictures of bits and pieces I thought he might be interested in. And he said, yeah, he'd like to visit and have a look. Farms. Because of their sort of nature, they're massive and they've got loads of outbuildings and sheds. Always a good hunting ground. And they tend to stay in the same family for a while, don't exactly, they? Yeah, so exactly, yeah, exactly. And if they're anything like Welsh farmers, they never really sell anything either. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like the place. It looks like farm buildings. And so, oh, they've got a donkey. Oh, my favourite animals in the whole world. I love donkeys. They love you too. No, they do. I love them. They're the most intelligent animals. Dale? How are you doing? How are you? Drew. 
How are you? Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Same here. You're all right, mate. Oh, horses. Oh. Hello, 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 hello. It's a great place you've got here. We're here after your call, really, because I remember you sent me a picture of um, uh, a wrought iron bench. And a yeah, park of bench and park a couple bench. of bits and pieces. Yeah, so we thought we'd yeah. um, pop down. Oh, that's young. When did it, when did that one arrive? It's about a week old. A week. So what do you do? Do you sell them sell them afterwards? The do wife, you? I don't. She keeps breeding them, and we got a couple in Ireland that someone jumps for us. And no. Ah, this is what you rang me about initially, wasn't it? Yeah. This old, it's an old park bench. There's one slap missing, but it's there on. It's just dangling on it. Where is it? The the, the top one. Yeah, the top it's here. rail missing. No, it's here. Ah, okay. It's all complete. It's just two of the just rivets there. are gone. Ah, well, that makes it a bit different, really, having having that. Can we get that out, do you think? Yeah, it's only jammed in. Wedged in. Watch your fingers. You out of the way? Yeah, go on. There we go. It's all there, it just wants riveting. So it just needs... Can you hold that end up there? It'll yeah. be on the front of that. Just put it there, like that. Put it on the front. Have you got the rivet? There you go. Yeah. Can you hold that there for a second, yeah. see? Just see what it looks like. It's not bad shape, actually, is it? You're talking about me, there? Oh, you're in terrible... <laughs> you're in a terrible state, you are. If I was coming to buy you, I wouldn't be spending it'll, any money it'll today. Walk to you need a bigger van. <laughs> I need a bigger van. <laughs> I quite like the sort of... beaten upness of yeah. it. You know, the sort of bend in it I quite like. This wrought iron bench was made in the late 19th century. The worn, slatted metal is appealing, but it's had some dodgy repair work. With considerable restoration, it's worth about £650. The bench, nice, but whenever you're offered something, you must look at it properly. And the entire right front leg had been changed. The back rear leg had had a repair. The right arm had had a repair. There were several rivets broken in the mid section of the seat, plus it was bent. There was a stretcher missing, the top rail was missing, so the right hand arm that had been completely replaced and both back legs had been both back and front legs had been replaced. What do you want for it? Yeah, what do I want for it? Yeah. Right, two fifty. No, too much. Um, in good nick, yes. Well how would you say it? It's tops. Be honest, in that nick, hundred quid, and that's yeah. absolute no, tops. I couldn't take that for it. The, the the state yeah. it's in, I've got I to get. I understand to... that you got to pull man on it and I'll get a nice nick with all that repaired, I'll get four and a half, including the vat and everything. Yeah. I know it's going to cost me three or four hundred quid to get it right. There's still profit in it after that, though, because it's a very, very good shape. Um, but I can't pay 250. It's a shame. The day might yet be saved. There's still a trailer full of furniture to see. Ah, OK. Good luck in here. Thanks, T. You, know, you always say get right to the back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit of a mission today. I'm about to get my hands out my pockets and everything. Have you spotted something, Drew? No. Nothing. It's difficult because it's like four layers of furniture. Yeah. You're just trying to look through all of it at once without breaking anything as well. Tricky. It's all sort of fairly normal, just household furniture. Nothing in there for me. No, to be honest with you. The trip is looking to be a waste of time unless Drew can find something in the last two sheds. No. Unless you want a camper van, too. No. OK, so this one here as well. You never know. So what did... Um, where's all this lot ended up from, then? Oh, just stuff we've collected over the years. No, nothing in here. So where should we, um... Oh, some calves. Some calves, they are, T. Not cows. I calves. said calves. Calves. Um... I've just bought and sold one of these, actually. What is it? It's a tack hanger. Looks like you're using that. No. You're not using no. that? No. All right, OK. I've just um... bought and sold exactly the same one. That same mechanism like that, the yeah. same drop. I bought some old horse harness the other week and... That came with it? They were all hanging there. I didn't realise it adjusted like it didn't. But, like, the, all the old harness and that was absolutely rotten. Yeah. In the 19th century, this steel hook with rifle bolt fitting held horse tack. 
Today, it could be used as a novel pot holder in a kitchen or coat rack in a shop. With a quick clean, it's worth about £60. So if you've just bought it, how much is it going to cost me? Uh, Drew and T are visiting a horse farm in Leicestershire. Have you spotted something, Drew? No. So far, Drew has found nothing to buy. Looks like you're using that. No. You're not using that? No. Unless he can close a deal on this tack hook. So if you've just bought it, how much is it going to cost me? Uh, 40 quid. 40 quid? 40 quid, 40 quid, 40 quid. What did I sell the last one for? I got 60 quid for the last one, cleaned. So, 30 quid. Go on, then, it's yours. Thank you very much. We'll have that. Best case scenario today, I'll make 30, 40 quid profit, maybe, out of it. Uh, not enough to pay the diesel, to be honest. But this is the nature of my job. Um, you can go to a lot of houses, farm sales, auctions, demolition sites, you name it, and walk away with nothing. But I have to go to everyone. It's what I do. Unfortunately, today hasn't worked out. That is the way it is. Can't always be full of gold, can it? No, nothing there for us today. That's the way it goes, so let's just move on. Let's just move on. It's a light load on this trip home to Conway. But Drew is keen to show Rebecca his one big find from Elmore Court. Back! Hello, 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 hello. How are you doing? All right. That's a bit special. There. Get off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Is it what I think it is? Yes. Is it a Howard? Yes. It's, a, it's in terrible nick, though. It's completely gone. There's nothing left. No, They're actually sticking out the bottom. But it's a Howard. Yeah. It's fab. It's fab, isn't it? I you mean, know. even though it's gone, it's just special to sit in. Yeah, yeah. Great. Really oh, that's, that is a gem. So, uh, sell it as it is or restore it? Restore it, two grand. Money least, out, yes. at least, to get that done properly and professionally and right. Or knock it down the road as it is. What would you rather? Knock it down the road as it I is. I thought you might. <laughs> <laughs> Only one sofa. That doesn't matter. It's quality this time, not quantity. Drew always wants to be one step ahead of other antique dealers, so his next trip is to untapped territory. It's a five-hour trek south from Conwy to the hamlet of Bolbento near Launston in Cornwall. Surrounded by 300 miles of coastline, Cornwall is best known as a seaside holiday spot, but it also has a long history of smugglers and pirates. We're going to see a pirate place. Arr! <laughs> That's how you talk when you're down here. Arr! Arr! We're off to see Jamaica Inn. Oh, nice! Set amidst the eerie landscape of Bodmin Moor, Jamaica Inn was built in 1750 as a resting place for weary travellers. Its remote location made it a favourite for smugglers and ghost stories and the inn's fame grew after the famous author, Daphne du Maurier, wrote a novel of the same name. Today, it houses a museum and is run by Kevin Moore. We've invited Drew down. We think um, we have some items that would be very interesting to him. Old chairs, tables, and all sorts of artefacts. I think he'll have a fun day. Here we go. This is the place. Arr. Arr, we be docking. Arr. They'll be having rum. Arr. I tell you what, I can't keep this up all day. No, it's, gonna, oh. it's hurting, isn't oh. it? Oh, playing havoc with your chest. Right then. Kevin? Hi, Drew. Drew. Oh, very well. Hi, nice to meet you. you Welcome yeah. to Jamaica Inn um, on Sunny Bodman Moor. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> it's not yeah. sunny today. <laughs> no, it's a bit misty out there. Yeah, yeah, just a bit. I think it's <laughs> witchcraft when the sun comes out. <laughs> it's ideal in smuggling weather, actually, isn't it, yeah, really? Perfect. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. I know, it's a wonderful old building. I love all the, the paper money stuck around there. OK, well, we're here to see uh, the museum. Yeah, of course. Wouldn't mind having a skim around the pub Absolutely. later on. No problem but at can all. we have a look at the museum now? Of course, no problem yeah. at all. Follow me. Any coaching in, pub, hotel, guest house, B&B, you name it, they have one thing, high turnover of furniture. And they tend to just throw them in a shed and forget about them and buy something else. That's why these are always worth coming to. 
Ah, so, this is the museum. This is um, our Daphne de Maurier collection. Yeah. We actually have her writing desk here. Do you? So, everything in here, is this all Daphne de Maurier's personal but, effects? Yeah, absolutely. Even down to the cigarettes and the foxes? Absolutely. Mints. Are we able to go in there and have a look? Absolutely. So, no OK, problem. where do we...? All right, just go through. Yeah, please do. Oh, well, there's a display on the floor here, too. It's a... Uh... Wow. Look at the desk. It's great. I'm glad you've left it unrestored as well. Really? Just, oh, I think that was definitely the way to go. If you'd have restored it, I think you'd have taken some of the sort of heart out of it, really. Right. To be perfectly honest with you. But I'd love it. You've got her cigarettes and everything. Yeah. This place has got a lot of things going for it. There's the fact that Daphne de Maurier wrote Jamaica in here. That would have brought in a considerable amount of money in the day, and they would have spent that on lots of furniture. The two bits that I like the look of are these. Right. You've got two of them there. They're not matching. OK. Am I right to move them? Yeah, of course you. Sure. Yeah. These are late 19th century Scottish bobbin chairs. Right. So they've had quite a trip Yeah. down here. So, I don't know, it's... Uh, they're worth quite a bit of money to me. Really? Yeah. They've got a certain something that I quite like. I mean, is there a possibility they're for sale? Um, I, I don't think so, Drew, and the no. reason I say that is it's part of the collection. I think it would be wrong for me to, to okay. sell anything from this room. Sure. Can I just throw an offer at you? Of course you can. For the pair? Yeah. A thousand pounds? No. No? Sorry. Fourteen hundred. Sorry, they're that's not, it. They're just not, not for sale. Not for sale. Just not for sale. We've got other things we can look at. Okay, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I like this type of chair. Yeah, I, I can, really buy. I can I've see just that. bought one. Really? I've just bought one. Yeah, so I'm just thinking I can make up a collection. Right. You see his little face now. He's gutted. <laughs> he really wanted. One. I haven't got. They don't turn up very often, and to find two, particularly one that's quite a nice one, yeah, is uh, is a shame. But I completely respect what you're saying. So that's absolutely, that's, it's not fine, but OK. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look around the rest of the museum. OK, let's go. Being able to buy those today would have been make the trip down here well worth, well worth it. If I'd had to drive all the way to Cornwall, buy those two chairs and drive back, it would have paid off. Furniture with an impressive provenance could be just what Drew's after. Kevin leads him to the guest rooms, which are set to be haunted. Upstairs. Hang on, what about this? Can I have a look at this down this here, Kevin? Oh yeah, of course you can. The little settle there. Yeah. That's quite it's in a terrible state, but it's quite cute, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, what's what's the deal with this then? Where did this is this part of the, the pub from years or is it just something you've just got hold of? Yeah, I think I think this was probably one of the original settles that was at the inn when we bought it in 1973. Yeah, it's earlier than that, that's for sure. <laughs> it's quite a lot earlier than that. This style of high-backed bench, called a settle, was standard furniture in inns and taverns as far back as the 15th century. This pine settle dates to the late 18th century and could fetch around £700. It's a bit wonky, isn't it? It's a bit... It's had quite a lot hacked out of the bottom of it, but it's still got something about it. It's just your height as well, Drew. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's even sitable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Um... It's it's not a big money piece, to be okay. honest with you. Um, it's worth, uh, to me, £300. Right. Three, three, £350 is, you. is way more than enough for it, actually. Okay. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't be any more than that. That's, that's a very, very substantial bid for this thing, to be honest. That's that would, pretty fair. Is that fair? Yeah. Is that a sale? Yeah. <gasps> there you go, we'll have that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, great. We bought something. You know, that is top money for that in that condition, considering it needs money spending on it. I think I can get 550. I've got 50 quid to spend. There's 150 pounds in it, not including my time. Tight, but the ball's rolling. Right, follow me, please. Drew needs to find more profitable <laughs> items to purchase, so they carry on upstairs to the ghost ridden guest rooms. Okay, so what's this? Room three. Okay, room three. Francis Davy. One of the haunted rooms. Is it? I think probably the best thing for me to do. Yeah. Just leave you here and see if you can feel anything. <laughs> How so long does it usually take? Well, it depends. 
but we're not doing it. I'm not overnight with him. All right. <laughs> we'll do top and tail. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave you to it, all okay. right? OK, yeah. You feeling the spirits rising in you? No. At least you've got one nice bit of old furniture. So you're supposed to be looking for ghosts, and you're looking at his old chest. Yeah. Dead people's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the only sort of weird spirit in there was tea. All right, come on, then, let's okay. go. I'm not getting it. All right. With no ghosts and only one small item bought, the trip is in danger of becoming a financial disaster. It's taken us nearly seven hours to get down here. Um, we've got to make it pay. We've got to buy more. This looks, this looks more like it. Ah, this so this is, is overspill. Just yeah. Natural habitat. This feels better. Does it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing a couple of things already. Oh, good. There's um, something over here, like the look of. I got another big settle. Yeah. That's not so clever. That's quite a decent one, isn't it? Yeah, that's oh, you good. I got two. Yeah. One settle, fine. Three settles altogether. Now we're in business. Now we're making money. But what all of a sudden I've got in front of me is a collection. There's one issue with it, which is these backboards here. All these backboards have been replaced. See how ancient and sort of basic the base is, and then how uniform and perfect this top is, which is a hell of a shame. Mm. Can I just have a look at the other one as well? Of course you can, yeah. Has that absolutely. one got the cupboards in the base? I'm, I'm not sure, Drew, to be honest. Oh, you go the other way, you get a bit of light. Can I just have a look at the back? It's had some replacement boards on the base, but not bad. Not bad at all. OK, so what's this one going to cost me, considering I paid way too much for the other one? Well, I think, as before, Drew, I think you should make an offer. I've been making offers all day. Have I got... <laughs> <laughs> Can you not give us a clue? <laughs> Those ladies weren't impressed, though. <laughs> what, 7 50 Oh, no. <laughs> How much do you think I'm going to get for it? You're probably going to get about 1600 for it. No. No, I've just sold the best one I ever had for 1600 yeah. and it right. knocked spots off this one. Right, okay. It was also twice the size in original paint. Right. Really, really nice. Okay. This one's all right, but it's a bit work a day. The only yeah. thing I don't like about it is this sort of edging they put on the seat there. Right. Apart from that, it's 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 all good. I'm, I, to be honest, I'm at a similar price to the other one. I'm at sort of 350 OK. To be honest with you. This one, a bit disappointed in the backboards on that. It's a bit of a shame. Right. Um, and I'd say... Two fifty. Okay. So what's that? Six hundred quid. Mm. So six hundred for these, three hundred and fifty for the other one, nine hundred fifty for three. I I'm happy to accept that. You happy with that? Yeah. Good. Well pleased with that. Lovely. Uh, today I managed to walk away with three good original settles, and the best thing about it is I have perfect provenance. Each one of those is from the Jamaica Inn. That is really going to help. That's a nice thing to know. Kevin, thank you. Great having you here. No, thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Good to see you. Bye-bye. See you later. Cheers. So, a good day's buying? And we're on our way back. No. There's more, there's more to do down here in Cornwall. We're not coming this way, just for one call. Right. Make sure we see a lot of things. I want that van rammed. <laughs> rammed full of gear. Stuff bursting out the side. Bursting out the side. I want it in the front with us. That's a good day shopping. I want it so you cannot move. The next day, they drive 30 miles south to the town of St Austell, near the sea. The stunning stretch of coastline is known as the Cornish Riviera. We are going to see a guy while we're down here um, called Neil, who runs Eden Reclamation. And it's, uh, it sounds like a good call, to be honest with you. It's sort of old-school salvage yard. Eden Reclamation is one of the largest architectural salvage yards in Cornwall. But its location means that not many dealers find their way here. 
Yeah, I've invited Drew down today. We've got a great variety of stuff. Anything from small antiques up to massive two-ton granite lumps. I'd be disappointed if he doesn't leave with a van full. I think these yards are very, very much about just getting lucky, and this one is one of those. Oh, here you go. Eden Reclamation. Love the bath on top of the phone box. <laughs> that is good. How are you talking? Hello? Oh, Neil? Ah. Yep. Drew, how are you doing? Good to nice see to you. Meet you. Hi there. Good to see you. How are you? Nice to meet yeah. you. What a brilliant yard. Thank you. It's fantastic. So we, we all right to have a look around? Yeah, no problem. Give us a tour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no guide, I'm afraid. <laughs> First impressions, top yard. Like it. It doesn't take long to accumulate a lot of stuff, does it? No, not at all. It's a bit overgrown, it's a bit mad. It's a bit mental, really. And that I like a lot. I, I like the randomness of this yard as well. Yeah, I don't like saying to no to stuff, and it does get a I bit... I can tell you don't like saying no to stuff. <laughs> a bit crammed up. <laughs> Despite the clutter, Neil knows where everything is. First, he shows Drew an old trailer stuffed with odds and ends. These benches in here, see these red swing-back benches? Yeah. Where'd you get those from? Where'd they come from? Why are they that colour? Chapel ones. That was the... Well, that's how they came to me, in that colour. Strange. How many of this... We've got three of those swing-back ones. These pine chapel benches were made in the mid-19th century and have kept their original colour and clean functional lines. As a set, they'll fetch about £650. How much are they? £100 a piece. There's three there. Difficult to see how what sort of size they are. I can't do 100 I, I mean... Can we do, um... 200 for the three? 80 pound a piece. Well, so you're about, what, 240? Can we, um, can we pull them out? Yeah. Is that all right? Are they all yeah. the same length? As far as I remember, yeah. Watch your fingers. It's missing, the, missing its foot, unless you've got the foot in there for it. Must have left it beyond it. That's a nicer one. I prefer that one. I made a rookie mistake. I started to do a deal on them before getting them all out. Stupid. What I should have done is got them out and done the deal. Rookie mistake. Drew and T are in Cornwall at Eden Reclamation, a large and off-the-beaten-track salvage yard. It doesn't take long to accumulate a lot of stuff, does it? No, not at all. Drew's made an offer on these chapel benches. 200 for the three. 80 pound a piece. Well, so you're about, what, 240? But he's also made a huge mistake. It's missing, the, missing its foot. I started to do a deal on them before getting them all out. Stupid. The best one, which was the smallest one, which is a bit chunkier than the rest, is missing part of its foot. Actually, I think you're lucky I bid 200 quid, actually. I'm not going to pay any more. I think just with that... I did, I'm being honest, I didn't realise that, so I think that's only fair. So, do you want to do a deal at that? Uh. We'll have them for £200. Pound. Yeah, that's fine. They're quite a sort of normal thing. There's a lot of them around, but I just like the colour. It's good. Nice old worn paint. I have to, as well, to be honest with you, I've just spotted this. That's a beast of a thing, isn't it? Yep. It's quite a lump. This early 20th century butcher's block is a rare size, but it's a bit low and would need new feet to raise it to a functional height. Restored, it could sell for about £700. Fantastic wear on it, you know? Years that's taken to do that. Wonderful base, big double-ended drawers, just got a great look to it, a superb look. How much is this? Unrestored, 200 quid as it is. Very, very active woodwork. That's free. <laughs> I'm taking a bit of a chance on that. It's just three pets to a new home. Yeah. Um, 150. Just a worm in it. I think that's what I gave for it. I haven't yeah. got a very good memory, but I think that's what I gave for it. Okay. Um, okay. 
All right, I'll give you a profit on that one. Right. £200, pounds. you have to take I it. Don't think that was no, that's fine, that's fine. When it's dealer to dealer, pay him his profit. Let's give him his profit, it's fine for all. We all need each other, we have to work together. With two excellent finds under his belt, Drew moves on to another part of the yard, and in no time, he spots something he likes. That's odd, isn't it? Yeah, it's sort of kind of funky-looking little thing, isn't it? I like that. Looks like you've had it a while. No! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, you have. <laughs> it was right till you wobbled it. <laughs> Not sure how old it is, actually. It's got a look, though, hasn't it? This hardwood bench came from a local park and dates to the 1950s. The cast iron frame is an appealing modernist shape, but it's a bit rickety. Restored, it's worth around £400. Quite funky. How much is it? 120. 120. Um. That's an odd one. You just got the one? Yeah, just one on its own. 100 quid by it? Mm. Uh, go on, 120. That's a deal. Go on. Right. Yeah. There you go. Today's turning out to be a belter. Um, totally unexpected. You know, we're in the middle of nowhere, right down on the south coast, and um, turning up pieces that are really interesting. That's why you should always come to these salvage yards. Can you go through that? Yeah, you can go through that way. How long have you had that? <laughs> that's got to be four years. Four years? That's been yes. out here for four years. But antiques go up, so I'm not too worried. I have to be honest, I just couldn't believe my eyes. It's a superb cast iron insert uh, designed by Thomas Jekyll, made by, I think it was Barnard Bishops and Barnards. Just an absolutely achingly beautiful and fabulous designed uh, piece of aesthetic movement fireplace furniture. Absolutely superb. Love it. Whatever. That's going to cost me. I'm taking it home. Thomas Jekyll was acclaimed for his Asian-inspired ornamental ironwork, featuring bird and floral motifs. In the 19th century, his work was considered highly innovative and highlighted at major international exhibitions. Today, this fireplace insert is worth 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Uh, what do you want for it? Being it's in an awkward way in the way. And it's in a, yeah, and it's a state. 75 quid. 75 quid, sold. Thought you might. Thank you very much. Oh, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't know what it is, and that's always difficult. But, you know, when it comes down to it, it it's dealer to dealer, and a bit of knowledge can go a long way. So when he says 75 pound, you know, I'd buy it. If he turned around and said it was 400 pound, I'd have bought it. I think I've made a mistake on that because I didn't see the potential in that. But then, that's the beauty of the job. You can't know everything. I've had a fantastic day here. I've bought stuff that's got real profit in it, and I've got that incredibly rare insert as well. I think that'll go in the Drew Pritchard collection, that one. It's just too nice. Love it. Absolutely fab. Generally, it was a, a good day. Um, made a few quid. Might make it to the pub tonight. All done? Yeah. Right, then. Neil, we're finished. Thanks, man. Tea looks finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, look, look. Got a bead. Yeah, I don't sweat. Does it doesn't do any work. That's right. <laughs> Cheers, thanks, Neil. Cheers. Yeah, Thank you. That was brilliant. It's just, oh, do you know what I'm saying? You know, go to the out, out of the way places. Yeah. Go to the place that maybe not many people go to and you might find some bargains, you never know. So, you know, Cornwall's worked out well. Practically filled the van. Are we going home then? Uh, yeah, Cornwall's been good, but let's get back up north and get this lot sold. The next day, back in Conway, the weary travellers have their work cut out for them emptying the van. Gav! Give us hands. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how you doing? Let's come back to me. Oh, you need definitely a hand. <laughs> Grab hold of the others. Grab hold of this side. I'll pull the trolley out. One, two. 
fingers. Wow, that's seen some use, hasn't that's it? Seen some use. It's quite low. Uh, butcher's table, uh, they're really trendy at the moment. And they sort of have been for a while, actually. As a statement piece, fantastic. Ugh. Another odd one. Fab colour. Yeah. Isn't that strange? Yes. Look at the... Uh, it needs a... Sorry, no. It's, it's well, the, the, all the uh, ends are rotten, so what you have to do, Gav, is take the whole thing apart, yeah. cut the ends, put it back together again. You could be able to leave it in one. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. You know, cast iron. No. I love that. It's good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really... Different. Different. Yeah. Well, sure. Stylish, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. That's what I thought. You can see it somewhere else. You could paint it, we could mess about with it more and paint it, but I think no. Leave it as it is. Mm. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very nice. Three of um, Jamaica Inn. No, we've got a call to go down there. Yeah. Um, oh. This one's been cut down, it's been battered, yeah. but it's still original paint. It's. Yeah, but it's all right, you know, it's okay. Wait till you see the other two, though. I think these are original to the first incarnation of Jamaica, Jamaica Inn. Inn. What provenance? Is that heavy, all? Sorry. You're so big and strong, you two. <laughs> what do you think of that? I like the seat on that. How good's that? Oh. Isn't that... Look at that timber. What a find. Three settles. Absolutely... They're stunning, actually. The age of them. You can just imagine the old sailors sitting there, smoking their pipes, drinking rum. Dick Turpin sat on this one. Did he? Yeah. Dick Turpin was here. <laughs> he couldn't spell either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does it say that? It says it there. Dick Turpin was here. Was W-O-Z. Was, was here. In the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> Written in Byron. Yeah. You can't spell it. <laughs> Ace salvager Drew Pritchard has been collecting, selling and enjoying antiques for 21 years. That chair's not been, not been finished well enough. His business is the ultimate in recycling, buying discarded or unwanted items and restoring them for future generations. You can't do this job without appreciating the history behind every object. And the people who I'm dealing with, they appreciate it too. But that can make bargaining tough. But really, to be honest, I have so much fun buying and selling with people that it doesn't matter. I just enjoy it. Today, Gavin is accompanying Drew and they're driving to the edge of the Cotswolds to Cheltenham. A spa town since 1716, when mineral springs were discovered, it quickly developed into a pleasure resort for wealthy visitors. And centuries later, its historic promenade and squares are still enticing tourists. The sun always shines on Cheltenham, I think. It's absolutely stunning. Look at the architecture. But we are here today to go into Cheltenham College. Not to learn. <laughs> Not to learn, no. I don't think they'd let us in to learn. <laughs> I'm John Champion. I have the great privilege of being bursar of this, uh, this fabulous school. Uh, we are the oldest of the Victorian public schools, and as bursar, I'm responsible for everything that isn't really teaching. Through my team, we look after the finances, the grounds, the gardens, uh, personnel matters, catering, you name it, we do it. Founded in 1841, Cheltenham College was originally a school for boys only and divided into classical and military sides until the mid-20th century. In 1998, the school became fully co-educational. So we're hoping to find some stuff in this college, then, aren't we? Well, they've been doing some work. Uh, they're going to have a bit of a clear-out and they've mentioned tables, lighting, seating and religious ornament as some of the things they might want to get rid of. This looks like it here. Cheltenham College. And blimey, isn't it swanky? That's gorgeous. John? Drew. Good to meet well, you. How are you doing? Welcome to Cheltenham. Gavin, hi. Good awesome. to meet you. Come on in. Thanks. Oh, wow. It's wonderful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful, really beautiful. So, come on in. Oh, wow, it's uh, very, very impressive, isn't it? We're rather proud of it. Wow. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Look at this, look at the ceiling there. Look at those fabulous glass there, I love that glass. 
I see there's an awful lot of dedications to and war memorials here yep. for past pupils. College has a really, really strong military history. Um, we have, uh, for instance, the 14 Victoria Cross winners from wow. college through the years and have lost uh, 1,500 pupils or, or old pupils, old boys uh, in various conflicts through the years. So every major British conflict, there's yeah. been yeah. an old Cheltonian? Absolutely, since 1843, uh, right up to the most recent conflicts. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hugely important part of our history. I mean, the uh, Reredos, this here at the east window, yeah, that, that is, is truly of, spectacular. Again, this has a military aspect to it. This is part of the uh, memorial to those who fell in the Boer War. All of that is? Yeah. It is spectacular. The altarpiece as well, that's it's wonderful. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. We buy, and I've bought hundreds and hundreds of church interiors. This one's not for sale, I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it. It's too good. Yeah. It's an incredible condition. Yeah. Right, this is spectacular. Can we see more of the school, please? You certainly can. Yeah. Come on. That's great. It's useful, isn't it? It's like Hogwarts, isn't it? It's been, <laughs> it's, it's, rather, it's been a chapel, it's been a library, it's been a museum, and now a dining hall. Ah, OK. This is why I'm looking at one of my favourite things. This is why we're here. Benches. Tables and benches. These are fab. Beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. I love big tables, big refectory tables like this. Do you know what, the benches are lovely as well. Well, aren't they beautiful? These are great because they're all oak. So do you see similar many other places you visit? No, these are much better than the norm because it's a nice big single oak plank to most of them. That one's yep. two. Um, but this, the sort of double pillar on the stretcher there, that's unusual. I think if I was able to buy the tables, how many do you think you've got? Uh, there must be about 40 of them in total. Well, I'd, um, I'd quite happily write you a cheque for well over £20,000 for this lot. Well, there might come a time when we would happily accept that cheque, but... Uh... And that's not including the benches. Right, OK. So it would be an awful lot more money. And how much would the benches add to that? Well, um, so how many have you got? 40, 80, uh, to... Uh, probably add another 12,000 to the benches. OK. That's not bad, okay. is it? That's you bad. could round that up to 50,000, presumably? No. <laughs> Are you going to deliver them as well? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that will yeah. deliver. We, we, I'm sure we could do a deal. They're, they're definitely not for sale at the moment, but who knows about the future? Who knows? We'd probably, yeah, 50 yeah. grand. Let's yeah. have them. Yeah. Should we come back tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> Go and get the van. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you. That's Good. great. Let's get on to them somewhere else, please. Perfect. Here we go, Jens. Right, so this is the... This so is the welcome, welcome to the dungeons. <laughs> it is a bit of a dungeon, isn't it? God, it's huge. This is huge. It goes the full length of the building, and we need to have a good clear out here. So, so this is where... If you want to help us make a start on it, that'll be good. I will do. I will do. And I can help you out very quickly as well. What about that table? This, uh, this may be of interest. What's it doing uh -huh. down here? This sad state, isn't it? Yeah, it's not in uh, it's not in great repair, but we've got our own estates team here, and we would refurbish this and put it back into to good use pretty quickly. Yeah. So, but you're not using it at the moment, eh? No. Not at all. Just... This 1920s oak refectory table was manufactured specifically for the college and was last used as a mail table in the school common room. With some restoration, it could fetch one thousand five hundred pounds. Is this? Can this go? Yeah, this could go. Yeah, um, what, what would you want for this one, then? Well, look, you're, you're the man who's buying. OK. Uh, so you'll need to make us an offer for it. Right. Um, what about, um, in this state, 500? Pretty reasonable bid, I think. You know, my problem is, as I say, I've got a team here who can refurbish this and yeah. we can put it back into use and, and would have put it back into use. And 500 doesn't give me much to, you know, you know to replace yeah, it with, yeah, yeah. To, okay. to, to come up with some alternative. So, so, so what, what, what would so you prefer? So 500's not really doing it. OK. Well, OK, full final B. 
bid, then I suppose 750, and that's it. I can't go any higher than that. No. Okay. So I think that's 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 where I'm at with it. So I can't really do any more. Than do that. We, should we have a look at other items and then see? Yeah. Okay. If, let's do that. I'd rather do that. Because if actually. you if you don't find anything else, then you'll have lots of money left, and you might be able to do a little bit better than 750. <laughs> <laughs> no, we buy lots of these. Whatever I've got to do today, I do need to buy that table. It's good stock. It's in great condition and it's unrestored and it's right in front of me. We have to buy that table. Uh, there's a lot of modern yeah, stuff, so isn't there? A lot of this stuff in here is uh, props for drama productions. Do you have a theatre here as well? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Still more. Oh, no, no. What, what, what about these in here, John? This stuff. Can I go in there? Uh, yeah, I think it's open. What have you spotted? It's this, um, the cross and the nativity figures, mainly the cross, to be honest right. with you. Oh. There we go. Yeah. Do you want to grab that gaff and take it out? That's nice, right, isn't it? So you could find a home for that? Um, I actually collect them. I live right. in a church and I've got a, a, quite a large collection right, of okay. these things. This late 19th century church cross is made of brass and set with glass stones. Originally, it would have been at the altar of the school chapel and is worth around £800. So you're not, not in use? It's not in use and it could be for sale at the right price. So what would you want for this? Because it's not something you can replace once it's gone. So 400 um. Drew Pritchard is at the prestigious public school Cheltenham College in Gloucestershire. It's uh, very, very impressive, isn't it? We're rather proud of it. In the basement, his bid for an oak refectory table wasn't accepted. Now he's got his eye on this brass cross, but the bursar is holding out for a better deal. So 400 you could? Yeah, oh, that would be the absolute top. Um, I can pay for it, really. I think that's that's pretty fair. Well, if I do that for four hundred, yeah, will you give me eight fifty for the table as well? Um, I'd give you eight. I'd go to eight, and we do twelve hundred. So twelve fifty for the two. <laughs> you don't teach maths, here, do you? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, go on, twelve fifty for the two. Yeah, twelve fifty. Yeah, I'll we'll have those. Good. Thank you. Much appreciated. Oh, you can hold that now. Thanks. The cross is a little expensive, to be honest with you, but the table's on the money. That's OK. We can make money at that price. Yeah, it's like the older stuff. Coffins. Yeah, <laughs> we, can, we can do a coffin or a double base. There's still the green things. Oh, God, you're right in front of you. Couldn't see for looking, as Graham would say. I'm not sure about that. No. Keep for both drama. I think that means no. <laughs> in there. <laughs> this this uh, this this mirror. Yeah. What's uh, where's this one from then? I have no idea where that's come from. It's a Swede. No, it's uh, red felt. There was a fashion in the Victorian period for covering everything in in red, red felt. felt. They'd cover. Yeah. Yeah. Picture frames, stools, yeah. uh, even bookcases yeah. in it. OK, Gav, can you just help me just lift this over? Let's have a look at the back. Get out. There you go, careful. Yeah, it's dead on. It's absolutely right. This overmantel mirror was manufactured in the late 19th century. It's covered in felt and decorated with brass stars. It used to hang in the school staff room. With minimal restoration, it could fetch £1,800. Can this go? Are you using it? It's got to be a lot of money, hasn't it? It's... Um... Well, it's not going to be 50 quid, put no. it that way, no. It's got a nice old plate in it. Yep. It's quite sparkly. 600. No, I wouldn't sell it for that. No. Uh, largely because I don't know yeah. what the background is and... Sure. Yeah, that. Okay. So where, where, where would you be happy letting this go? 600. And 25% of your profit on it. Um, I'd always usually rather just buy it. Yeah. It's just tidier. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. It's up to you, though, if, if that's the only yeah. way I can. If that's the only way I can buy it, I will. Yeah. Mm. OK, let's do that. You sure? Yep. You happy with that? Yep. OK. Yeah, we'll have a deal. Yeah, thanks. Um. He's ensuring that he gets a good deal. That is his job. And he's done a very clever and a very good deal. And I'm happy to stick with it with him. So I'm going to be looking at Drew's website now on a regular basis to see what that mirror is selling for. And, uh, yeah, I'll be on the phone to him straight away as soon as it sells. John, thank you so Very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Really thank appreciate it. Nice yeah, to meet thank you. you. Thank okay. you. Take Good care. to see you guys. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Good it was a great day. The college is... I wish I'd gone there to school. Imagine going there. Imagine the difference that would make to your life going to that school. I wouldn't be doing this then, though, would I? Oh, oh God. Don't... don't toy with me. It's true. <laughs> Back at base, Drew and his team unload his purchases. Hello, can we have a hand, please? Hello. Hello, mate. Have you had a good time? Yeah, good. Um, we've got some good pieces, actually. It's a um, oak refectory, refectory table. Refectory table. And there is a top. But it's a particularly nice top as well. Doesn't need much work. All we're going to do is strip all the old varnish off it. Look at this top. What do you think of that? Fantastic. Isn't that great? But we've got more. OK. We've got, we've got a nice bit of table decoration. Hi, sir. Where? That. You can have your Fantastic. own altar. Fantastic. Yeah. I like all these different stones around the bottom. Yeah. They're all um, yeah. different. And there's more. We've got another piece. Oh, I like that. That's lovely. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it velvet? It's velvet. Yeah. Velvet covered. Yeah. Brass. Studs. Detail. Mm. It's absolutely beautiful, this. It is, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, let's put it somewhere safe. Fabulous place, though. What a place. No sooner is Drew back than he's off again, and T is back in the driving seat. They're travelling over 250 miles north to the small village of Hewitt in Northumberland, and Drew's on the trail of some specific architectural salvage. We're going to go and see a couple who live in a castle Robin purchased the property in 1979. Robin specialises in restoring antique gilt mirrors and pine and gesso chimney pieces. He is a retired architectural antique dealer, one of the first antique dealers in architectural antiques alone. But what has happened, they've sort of gone through all that process and come out the other side as specialists in Robert Adam chimney pieces. Robert Adam is a Scottish architect, a very, very well-known Scottish architect of renown and incredible skill. Although known as Coopland Castle, it was built as a tower house in the 16th century. A farmhouse was added in 1726, and finally a Georgian extension a century later in 1826. I love a good castle, to be honest with you. Uh, ideally, he's got some bits and bobs for us, you never know. Um, what I'm looking for really is architectural elements, maybe some pieces of furniture. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Hello. Hello. Hi. Fiona Jell. Drew. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Robin. Hello. 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 Welcome to Copeland Castle. Thank you very much. It's, <laughs> it's, our home. Yeah, it's very nice. Mm. I Thank like you. it. I like it. Um, wonderful. So um, I'm Would here like to see some stuff. You are, yes. Oh wow! A wonderful hallway. Thank you. That's oh, beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Well, it's, old house, isn't it? it's where the farmhouse meets the country house. Yeah. So you can see by the height of the doorways. Yes, yeah. And we yeah. have the original mm. step. Oh, I see. That so that used to be the old front door here. Yes. 
OK. Well, I'd love to have a quick scoot round the house. Oh, it's a lovely room, isn't it? Thank you. It's our favourite room. It's just the proportions of these Georgian rooms are just wonderful. The big windows, I love them. Is, is this some of your work, this chimney piece here? We, we, we put the swan in. You did? Yeah, it's a nice one, isn't it? Yes, Good it's, size. It's got seashells on it. It's an Edinburgh one. I see. I've never seen these shells before, these conch shells. Never seen that. The shells are very typical of the Edinburgh makers. They were made they? by a shipyard. This chimney piece is part of Robin and Fiona's home and not for sale. But Robin still has a hoard of fireplaces from his days as an architectural antique dealer. Ah, it's your showroom. Yes. Now, I love this one here. That's lovely. Tactile. So very tactile. Yeah, beautiful. So it's Belletian moulding, this type of moulding, this here. This is a really sort of classic sort of Robert Adam one, isn't it, really? You can see these classical Greek-type urns here with the bow and swags below then, and swags then again and, and ribbon. The condition of these things, considering they always are covered in paint whenever you buy them, is remarkable. A lovely. So how long has it taken you to sort of build up a collection like this? Did it take a, a good few years, I well, should I imagine? started de 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 dealing in, uh, in the mid-70s. In these? Wow. So you must have sold hundreds of them. If not thousands. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate these Adams chimney pieces, and they're really, really good. But I only buy chimney pieces if they're sort of stone or possibly marble um, or unrestored. If I found an unrestored Adam chimney piece, I would buy it because I could trade it out. But a fully restored one, unless I've got a customer waiting, I can't use that. Very nice, very nice. Nothing in here for me to buy, I'm afraid. It's all too good, if you know what I mean. It's very specialised, very beautiful. So the main purpose of Drew's visit hasn't been successful. But Robin and Fiona are happy for Drew to check out their storage areas in the hope that the trip to the north can still be saved. We have a lot of storage, which means we don't get rid of anything. Yeah. That's nice. I'll tell you what, I do like this here. I grab the... I'm careful with it. What puts it... That's it. That's it. That's nice. What do you think? Is this um, something you'd consider getting rid of? Drew's in Northumberland at Coopland Castle, where he had been hoping to purchase some antique fireplaces. Nothing in here for me to buy, I'm afraid. It's all too good. But never one to let an opportunity go, he's now looking in the storage areas and has spotted this light. What do you think? That's lovely. I really like that. This single fluted opaline light was designed in England during the early 1920s. With its original brass gallery and some new wiring, it could get nearly £300. That's really, really rather lovely. What would, you, um, what would you want for that, then, Robin? I don't know. Give me a clue. Where do you want to be? Fifty. Fifty? That's very reasonable, I would say. I'll shake your hands at fifty. Thank you very much. Thank you very I'll much. Up the offer. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see if I can give you a bit more money with when I buy something else, maybe. I let's you. let's try that. But um, <laughs> that's very reasonable. That's lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Only a small purchase, but there are still some outbuildings to look through. So this is just bits of architectural salvage and lighting and odds and sods. Yes. Lighting parts. We do lots of lighting, so I'm always looking for bits as well, even if it's just chain or... I quite like this, Robin. What about this, um, this dome here? have had a little display in there of some sort. Where did this come from? Is this something you're using or not? <laughs> it would be good to have cheese then. <laughs> <laughs> I like buying them. They look good whatever you do with them. It sets a room off as well because they're clean. They look great. And this one was on a hardwood and then an ebonised base, which has got a little bit of wear to the ebonising. So the whole thing was just really attractive. 19th-century glass domes were individually hand-blown by skilled Victorian artisans and kept the dust off rare or precious items. This one could fetch £200. What, what's this one worth? Well, I, I 
of the Samir boo boo. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Only a little. You made a little boo boo on the last one. I have to say, it was a little bit cheap. A little bit cheap. I think you were sort of you've, you've given it to me for half price. I think the last that one, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. If I gave you, it's not. I'll give you fifty pounds for that, and I think that sort of rounds makes that a bit fairer. Uh, I think that sounds pretty fair. I, I think that sort of evens things up a bit, That's so we'll have a deal on that, shall we? Thanks, Robin. There you go. I feel a bit better now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay a little bit more than I'd normally pay for one of those because I got the light too cheap. So I now feel we're sort of a bit fairer. It sort of redresses the balance and sort of restores my antique karma. Had a really Lovely nice day. You. Thank you very much. Wonderful thank fireplaces, you. wonderful house. Lovely Lovely thank to meet you, you so much. You. And you guys. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank thank you. Very much. Safe journey. Thank See you. you. See you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The next day, Drew and T are straight back on the road after receiving a phone call from a new contact. It's a long five-hour drive south to North London, but they hope it will pay off. We're in North London today, next to Wembley, Wembley. which I've never been to. No, I've not been here before. Uh, to meet a guy called Mark, who runs a company called Prop Hire and Deliver. Right. My name's Mark Bradley. Essentially, what we do is hire props to the film industry. We specialise in uh, sports props and medical props. So everything from a golf ball to a boxing ring, The only problem with going to places like this is that the pieces that I want, which are the rare, interesting and desirable bits, are usually the bits that are rented the most. Yeah. So it'll, we'll see. It's just the look of the draw, really. I think it's down here. There you go. Prop hire and deliver. Mark, I'm true. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Um, it's a pro power of the little. Thank you very much. This is a fantastic place you've got here. Can I have a look round? Certainly. Please. I know that you're into vintage sort of things, so on that basis, there are a few bits and pieces that hopefully will interest you. Okay. All right. Football goals, football nets. You know, all the benches, fly benches. Okay. Slatted benches, old school benches, the form ones, you know. Right, so footballs, every sort of ball you could possibly ask for. Branded, unbranded. And skateboards, do you mean? Skateboards. You have to have everything. <laughs> we have to have everything. We had one of those. Yeah. I remember going down the village hill on one of those. Yeah, about, never... about six of us. <laughs> Lethal. Yeah, exactly. You're you're smashing any... knees to yeah. get. Yeah. Never had any skin on your knees or your no. Box and stuff. I like those. They're quite cool, aren't they? Is there demand for these? Uh, definitely. I think these I like. They're very cool. These leather and suede punching bags are from the 1920s, and the original leather and lacing is still intact. The ball sits on top of a cast iron sprung base. They're worth around 500 pounds each. These uh, I love. I don't. I've, punch bags. Are these for sale? Mm, mm, not really, no. to be honest with you. I like that a lot. What would you use them for then? It's just decoration. Paint someone's face yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> um, we, um, that's really nice. It's just a feeling that they give out to people. Do you know when you, you're doing a shop interior or a house or a club or something Don't like that? Don't mess about with you. Well, no, it's got a macho feel to it. It's masculine, it's sporty, it's engineering, it's leather. It's, you know, it's got all those bits mm -hmm. that we're already looking for. Um, are these the sort of things I want to buy? I mean, is this something that's really popular to hire? Yeah, I was going to say it is. That's the problem, really. I don't think we'll be selling that just on the basis it's such a popular thing to hire out. Really? But they're a definite no-no. Um, afraid so. OK. Slightly disappointed, but not surprised he's not going to sell those. Very rare item, particularly in number like that. Conditions good, unrestored. So, okay, fishing, well, climbing... Fishing, fishing and climbing, I suppose uh -huh. it's got to be. Well, I don't know if they're associated, but... Hockey sticks, Joey hockey sticks. 
Baseball bats. <laughs> Baseball bats. Oh, yeah. Never know when they're going to come in handy, exactly. Do one of those in the van. Flags. <laughs> Medical equipment. That's an ear. We can move some of this stuff out of the way and make it slightly easier to get into. Don't worry. God, he was a big chap, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the size of that. <laughs> it needs to be a bit earlier. Yeah. A bit earlier than that one. Yeah. I'll leave it here. Thank you. <laughs> Does that light up? Does that work? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe. 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 I think, again, too new. OK. To be honest. Sort of more... More that type. That type of thing. I mean, is this something you consider getting rid of? Well, we haven't learned to that in a little while, so maybe persuaded on that one. I think it's a bit new. It's my only worry. Mm -hmm. Looks a bit too perfect, doesn't it? Too new. Yeah. What I've really got to find is something just like that, but earlier again. It's got to be early, unrestored, cool looking, and it's in original finish. So that's what I'm looking for all the time, and it's incredibly hard to find. Are we all right to go upstairs? Yeah, feel free. Oh, thank you. So, more medical stuff to see if you can spot anything old. Here, you've got some yeah. trolleys and stuff in here that yeah. works. This one's yeah, the around. oldest one you've got. It's the trolley that the surgeon would have had all his kit laid out on. Right. It's an earlier variation. It's much, much better made than the later ones. It looks cooler. You know, you can have this as a drinks trolley. You could have it put a TV on it. It's got that feeling that you could use it for something else. That would be, again, something I'd probably be interested in. Is that something you hire out a lot? Uh, we do hire that out quite a bit. See all, see, all the rest there, they're all... They're all too new. That's the only old yeah. one you've got, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, with the trolley, I think we're going to struggle. There's two there that are newer, but exactly what you said is true. The newer ones, they let go. The older one, don't want to sell. So, I mean, it's up to you, but I don't know. No, anyway. they're too workaday, those, the stainless ones. They've got to be the earlier ones like that. Okay. I don't... I, I, I was fairly sure you weren't going to get rid of it. Mark, there was something I spotted when we were doing our initial quick walk round. OK. I wouldn't mind having a look at. Lead on. I've got... Thank you. Thank you. My uh, gut reaction is... Yeah. I think you already know what I'm going to go and look at, don't All you? Because right. I couldn't miss it. You can't miss it. It's that exercise bike at the back. Well spotted. Well spotted, I have to say. It's a beautiful thing. It's a 19... Uh, late 1950s, early 1960s exercise bike. They're uh, very desirable. Do you know the ones where you do that and the whole yeah, thing exactly, moves like, exactly a, like a horse yeah. almost? Yeah. It sort of gallops down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the beautifully engineered, highly desirable and very, very sexy looking thing. Even the seats are I was going to say, the seat being yeah. chrome and everything is yeah, what really yeah. sets it off as well. This type of exercise equipment was manufactured by Exercycle from 1932. By the 1950s, fully automatic motor driven bikes like this one were released, promising a full body workout while sitting down. With minimal restoration, it could fetch £5,000. It's chrome, it's beautiful, it's and fabulous. it is irreplaceable, so... Would, I, would 500 quid buy it? No, no. Would 800 no, quid buy it? No. Would two grand buy it? No. It is irreplaceable, really. Two and a half grand buy it? No. That's me done. That's me done. All I, done at two and a half, yeah? yeah it's, that's, a bit of, that's a bit of kit, isn't it? It really is. I right. think it's probably the best, for me, the best thing here. Yet another item that Drew wants isn't available to buy. Is his trip down south going to be a waste of time? I'll tell you what else is there. I don't know if, if, if... Am I right there? Is that a false leg? Probably will be. I can see it. I can get it, though. Do you want a leg up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give us a leg up, too. There we go. One, two. Yeah. All right, hang on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Oh, oh dear. His foot's... His foot's coming to bits. Don't mind too much about that coming off. Uh-huh. We've got engineering underneath it. What's so... I mean... Do you, do you, did you know that was there? I didn't know that was there. <laughs> Truth be told, I didn't know that was there, so I'll have to find out about that one, but... Um... OK. Well, that is something... I do like any anatomical figures, particularly hands and arms, right. or whole bodies. 
Uh -huh. I'm just wondering how you release, release that. The, Is that yeah. that? That must be to release the pressure to get your leg in. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's how they work, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I like that. Right, and then you can look in place if you want it. Yeah. This prosthetic leg was manufactured at the end of the First World War, after wooden legs were deemed too heavy and cumbersome. This artificial limb is made of polished alloy, a lighter type of metal thought to last longer. It could sell for up to £300. What's a... What's a uh, I'll have to give you that piece of... Second-hand leg worth. How much is it to hire that for a day? 20 quid. 20 quid. Mm -hmm. All right. Fifty quid. You have to go up from there, I'm afraid. Fifty-five quid. Oh, um, if you're going up the fibers, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, what we're going to want to pay for that. Uh, it's quite sculptural. I think I'm going to top out at a hundred quid. I don't want to pay any more for it, to be perfectly honest with you. I think if it had a better foot, it'd probably be pushed to a couple of hundred pounds for a nice one like that. Mm. Can we see a little bit more out of it? A little bit more might persuade me. Hundred and ten. That's it. That's me done. Hundred and twenty quid. Hundred and twenty quid and we're done. No, one ten. One fifteen, make me there. There you go. Deal. Thank you. There you go. So you can find all the bits of foot that have been lying <laughs> around now and we'll stick them all back on. <laughs> it's uh, quirky, it's unusual, it's macabre, it's odd, it's different. Maybe there's a market for it. I'm here, I've got to buy something, I've got to pay the diesel, I've got to make some profit out of the day. Yachty. <laughs> Lego. Lovely. Mark. True. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you very Thanks much. a lot. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. you very much. See you. Cheers. So, uh, how was that for you today then? It was what I thought would happen, which is. We found some bits that we couldn't buy. Yeah. It was a shame. I think today was more about just a contact. Yeah. To be perfectly honest with you, wasn't it? It was a contact. Back at base, Drew checks in on some of the items from Cheltenham. The mirror the boys have now cleaned, and it's come up as I thought it would. It's just very, very original and untouched. The table we got from there as well, that's come up beautifully. And the good news is that the mirror and the table have both sold immediately. They've both gone to the same person and they're both winging their way to California. So extremely fast sale was on the website for less than an hour. It's business as usual in Conway and French polisher Alex has tipped off Drew about a family member who might have some items for sale. So Drew and Gavin head off on the short 50-mile drive east to Liverpool. Famous, of course, for the Beatles, it's also known for its Victorian architecture, with the largest collection of National Heritage-listed buildings outside of London. I love Liverpool. I think the centre of Liverpool is staggeringly beautiful. And do you know what? Some of the antiques that come out of Liverpool are unbelievable. Gav, you know where we're off to today? Alex's uncle, isn't it? Yeah. Alex, uh, Alex the French polisher, his uncle is Dave Webster, and he's a very well-known and highly respected sculptor in Liverpool. I've been making sculpture for a living for about 40 years, on and off in Liverpool, sometimes abroad. When I mentioned to Alex, my nephew, who I was retiring, he said, Drew might be interested in some of the stuff that's here. Uh, some of it, you know, it's not great monetary value, but I'd like it to go to somebody who's interested in this kind of thing. Sculptor, been in the building, you know, 40-odd years. I think that could be quite good. There we go, this is the place, isn't it? Wow, check this out, Gav. Wow. Hello. Dave. Hi. Drew. How are you doing? Good Dave, yeah. Good. Hello, Dave. Gavin. Gavin. Nice to meet you. This is uh, pretty impressive. 
Yeah, something I've been working on for a while. It's um, you all right to touch it. Yes, yeah, so it's a sort of uh, wax clay. Oh, God, yeah. So it'll stay like that for a year. You can work on it forever, and then and cast it and then reuse the clay. Really? Yeah, absolutely. How long has that taken you to make? Um, I've been doing it for the last year on and off. I only do it in between jobs. It's something oh, for myself, you know, wow. some piece of sculpture I'm doing. OK, well, let's have the grand tour then, please. So what sort of stuff are you looking for? All sorts of everything, really. I'll know it when I see it. I'll tell you what I, you might have is, do you know the old, um, uh, sculptor stands with that, that turn on the top? Have you got any old ones of those or old sort of tables like this, older versions? I've got probably two old stands, yeah. With just a square or circular turn. There you go. That. That's it. I've got two of those, yeah. Got two of those. What are you going to... Are you keeping... Do you use them? Uh, no, I've got the, the more modern one, which will suit me at home, you know, when I've got a small studio at home. So as long as they've got some nice old age to them, which these have, yeah? Can we see the other one? Yeah, sure. It's through in the front room. If yeah, please. Through, yeah. It's nice, though. It's good, isn't it? Good looking, isn't it? This is the other stand here. I like this one. Is this one? No, no. No? That's <laughs> I'm taking That's that one off. I like that one. This is the one. Oh, I see. Same, Same as. Yeah, yeah. Slightly different. Shorter stem, but it's slightly thicker, so you get a bit more weight on that one. Brilliant. Yeah. That's... That's... So... I mean... I'd love to buy them. They'll either go to somebody who's going to use them for sculpture, or we'd yeah. use them at a trade stand, wouldn't we? Because they'd look brilliant if we had, you know, a couple of busts or something on them. Yeah. But really, really good. These two revolving sculpture stands were made in the early 20th century, designed in a traditional triangular style and made of oak. They're used to elevate and rotate a work in progress. They could fetch £500 each. What do you, what do you want from Dave? Uh, 100 quid each. Yes. That's Very lovely, thank you. you very much. Yeah. I'll tell you what I do like as well. I love all these busts you've got over here, particularly all this lot out there. No, they're the Beatles statues off the Hard Day's Night Hotel. They're the original models I made to take the casts off. Oh, OK. John what about Lennon. this John Lennon one? That's a really famous yeah, one, isn't he's, it? Yeah, uh, he's on the Hard Day's Night Hotel, yeah. So, oh. that Paul, George, Ringo. And they're the early ones when he was a kid, when he was 17, 18, so they're just like kicking off. The, old, well, the big quiff. And, they all yeah. want to look like Elvis. These these boats. Yeah, yeah. Where that, these pond like, yachts. That's like a Mersey flat. Um, I came out of the school. I wouldn't mind having a look at those, to be honest with you. Okay. Can we get them down? You want to get those down now? Oh, my. A little, little ladder, yeah. It's uh, got a great shape. It's like an ice skate. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That's super, isn't it? Put that one down there. Oh, that. That's a beauty. That's a stunner, that. Isn't yeah. that lovely? That's a good stunner. This is the one that really interests me, to be honest. And this is what, um... I think it's been like a Mersey flat. It used to be a Mersey flat. They were like a barge with sails that worked the Mersey. And uh, I don't think there's uh, any, any remaining. Sorry. That's... that's lovely. This English Mersey flat replica boat is modelled after the ones that worked on the River Mersey in the mid-18th century. With some restoration, it could fetch £800. The other two are pond yachts from the same era and are worth around £300 each. OK, well, what do you want for these, then? Which ones are you interested in? Um, I'm interested in this one. I'd say that one, that one and that one. OK. So, 80 quid. Yeah. Um, 100 quid for that, because I think if you do that, it's going to cost you a few bob to put it right, but that's, that's I a, a lovely it's... thing. OK, 80 quid, 100 quid. What about the big one? Um, um, again, 100 quid. So, what, 280? Um, can you do um, 250 of the three? Don't want to bash you too hard with it. Go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'd like to see them... I'd like to see them... Uh, Somebody having them, who loves them? Thanks, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> you just, just got Gavin two days very, very tricky work. I've bought three, you know, ancient pond yachts in a sculptor's warehouse in Liverpool, and that's just quite normal for us, to be honest with you, it's, but not what I expected. So what's in here? Uh, it's where I store stuff and make some of the little models. 
These are like the miniatures of the uh, Hard Day's Night Hotel sculptures, you know. What are those torsos made out down there? They're like a very, very hard plaster. Quite nice, that. And it's plaster? It's very, very hard, sort of stone-based plaster, yeah. And I put a bit of bronze on it. But they're new? Yeah, they're, they're made. I've made them, yeah. They're not old. There's, there's four of them. And there's quite a nice female one. What do you normally get for them? Well, you, if you take them as in the condition they're in and you want to fix them up, you have them for 20 quid each. I'm not sure if there's enough age to... Uh... No. No, no, too, too, too new for me. Very, very good, though. OK, bring it down. Good. Are the boats in there? No. Sorted. Thank you very much. See you again. Good fun. Thank you. See you soon. Enjoy your uh, restoration. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Dave. Ta -da. Take care. Yeah, it was a good day then. Dave was a thoroughly nice fellow, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, a nice bloke, wasn't he? He's like Alex. Went to see uh, Alex's uncle. Oh, the sculptor. Yeah, Dave. And um, guess what we bought from a sculptor? <laughs> a sculptor's stand. <laughs> you think? Yeah. They're nice. Aren't they great? Aren't they super for display? Display mm. your photography. They're lovely. What yeah. else? Bought strangely. Oh. This. Ooh, a boat. Pond yachts, which are coming off now, and this. Oh, look at Isn't that beautiful? Look at that now. Pond yacht. It's oh. called a Liverpool flat or a Mersey flat. And there, there you go. <gasps> oh, I like oh. that one. Go. These two are for decoration for you to use for. You're kidding. No, for <laughs> photography. So if Gav waxes and polishes them all up. Oh, true, they're amazing. Aren't they lovely? But they're just bits. This is the money this is. piece. The, the work See this as well. It's got oh, LaSalle Liverpool on there. It's apps. It's beautifully made. Love it. Isn't it lovely? Love it. Happy, Mattel. Please get rid of that. One. Aye, aye, sailor. Look who's here! <laughs> <laughs> you won't like this. You won't like this. A little weird. Oh! oh. Stay. See? Boy. Yeah. Thank you.